Hello, everybody. Yo, welcome back. It's been a while, but welcome back to the Anime Mystics podcast. Yes. This should be episode 11. All right. Because we had a two-parter last time. Yes. Uh, so, I'm Roman. This is Steven Sanoski-sama once more. And today we're going to be talking about the spring anime season, doing our wrap-up. Yes. Um, since we are now in the summer season, although we'll be getting into that at a later uh, later episode. Yeah, um, yeah. This episode is all about kind of cleaning up and setting up. Then when we come back, we'll dive right into the new batch of anime this season. Yeah, by then we should have a few episodes, be a few episodes in and be able to give a better opinion on what we think of the shows. Yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, it's been a, been a while since our last episode. <laughs> yeah. um, happy 4th of July. Yeah, happy 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> Hope nobody blew their hand off. Yeah, well. Uh, I know I didn't. Yeah, no better way to celebrate democracy than blowing up a small part of it. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Um. But yeah, I mean, it was pretty okay. Like holiday. Yeah, I got, I got the day off, but I didn't really want the day off. So. Yeah, I mean, we uh, we did our barbecue the weekend before because it didn't really make sense to us to do a barbecue after the fourth. So we were like, no, let's just do it uh, before the fourth. And the theme is always to throw a barbecue for those of us that were suckers enough not to go to AX. <laughs> and um, we're, we're going to be discussing AX later on. But um, yeah, it was uh, it, it was wild. I had I had a bunch of people here at my place in the back and all that. We you know we cooked a lot, drank a lot, laughed a lot. So you know, and a bunch of people were talking about anime and cosplay and games and FGO, FGO, FGO. Mamoru Miyano, and FGO. So yeah, you know the circle of friends that I roll with. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it to that. So. No, no worries. No worries. There's always next year. Yeah. Just as long as you're not going to AX. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm as broke as I am now, then that's not happening. There you go. <laughs> uh, I did want to go, though, because was it Poppin' Party was going to be there. Mm. Actually, they were there. Yeah. Along with, I think, uh, Reza Suilin. I think oh, well. they were there, too. And I know Rosalia is going to a different uh, convention in L.A. in like a month or two. Mm. But I won't be going to that one either. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> yeah. Well, if it makes you feel any better, uh, Madoka doesn't like, or Madokami doesn't like Love Live either because that's when she sent that earthquake right in the middle of their concert. Oh, is that when that happened? Yeah. <laughs> right in the middle of the Aquars concert. Boom! Earthquake. Like, like, get this idol shit out my con. <laughs> it's like, sorry, I'm a... I'm a bang dream girl. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, uh, like like you said, we'll be getting into that a little later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't really have any updates as far as AX, but I don't know what he has. So. Yeah, um, I, just bits and pieces that I heard. So I'll be talking about AX as it relates to just the various uh, uh, shows and events and games and whatnot. Um, but, you know, I, I heard that AX was rather interesting. Um you know, like I said, I didn't go because it just didn't have, like, a guest that was really compelling me to go. But some of the events they had sounded like they were really fun. But, again, if there's no, like, a, a guest or a concert in the case of, like, TM Revolution, I just, you know, I just, I can't justify it. I just, I just can't. But, you know, I'm always open. So, once again, we'll just look forward to next year. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe the next year will be the year Aoyuki comes out. Maybe. So, hey. And then uh, that'll be the big earthquake, and we'll all die. <laughs> but at least I'll die with uh, that one off my bucket list. <laughs> and I'll take that. Yeah, you'll, you'll definitely take that. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, let's get into this uh, wrap-up here. All right. Um, we're just going to do a quick quick mention of One Punch Man. Yes. Uh, I still have to finish it. Yes. So we will come back to it. Yes. Uh, hopefully... From what I understand, my cousin, Bell, should be coming up this weekend, so we sh I'm going to probably just see if we just watch all of that instead of doing One Piece. Okay. I think you, you guys have waited a long long time for One Piece. You can wait another week. <laughs> uh, besides, I think you would rather have us do a long episode of One Piece and have to focus on One Piece and One Punch Man, so I kind of feel like that'd be a better, better idea than just going for the both of them, because Bell might get tired <laughs> partway through One Piece. 
Uh, but yeah, we'll come back to One One Punch Man. Yeah, well, you know, One Punch Man is still worth talking about, and it was, you know, set, quote, air quotes, controversial. So we'll, we'll definitely come back around, and I am, yeah, I finished it, but I am curious to see what Roman's final thoughts are, and whether he believed the controversy, or if he's just like, eh, I liked it. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely come loop back around to Saitama. Yes. And uh, I get to tell Roman why Fubuki is second to Tatsumaki. Oh. That's just not true, but okay. <laughs> For two very good reasons. Yeah. <laughs> that Tatsumaki just doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. But Tatsumaki is a good number two. So. <laughs> Aoyuki. Alright, so we'll go... So we'll move on into the the first show, and this will be the one t- because it was a quick watch. So I'm just gonna knock out Joshi Kasai real quick. Yes. So you know what can I say that I didn't say the last time? It's wholesome. It's warm. It's three minutes out of your life, which yeah. when you what when you put them all together, what is that? Half an hour? Thirty six minutes? Three times twelve? Yeah. Yeah. It's about thirty six minutes. Less than an hour. Yeah. Take a half hour out of your life just to get some wholesome in your life, and you know, it's moe girls doing moe things, and you know, let me know if you get through it and watch that twist ending. Oh boy. Yeah. Never saw it coming. Who would have thought they were in a simulation? Oh no. damn! <laughs> it was the dog the whole time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, like I said, I think it's really really simple. And surprisingly, shockingly, the animation was really good on it. So it was like, it was so simple, yet it had such production value on it. It was just kind of like, huh. And I keep seeing, like, what looked like the voice actresses' names. And so, again, I say that they actually paid people to come and do, like, grunts and groans and, and noises. And I was just like, yeah. well, that must have been an easy paycheck. Yeah, just do that for an hour, and then, okay, we'll put it together. Don't worry yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll cut it together. Find the right grunts to put in the scene. Yeah, right. Might have only been a one-day thing. Just come in and give us a bunch of grunts, and we'll just put it into the episode. Yeah, yeah, we'll splice it together. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. It was a fun series for yeah. what it was. Three yeah. minutes of non-talking anime girls doing cute things. I'll take it. I'll take that any day. Yeah. Any day. Diving right into it? Yep, yep. Gay Kappa? Gay Kappa. Gay Kappa. Sarah's on my. Uh, I really enjoyed this series, actually. It, you know, <laughs> there, I, I can see why it was on that top ten list. Uh, and I think it was, like, number ten. And there was some drama to it that when you saw the motivation of the boys... Yeah. It it really there was a lot of more story to it than one would expect. I I think the whole Mawadu penguin drum kappa thing was a little like weird <laughs> and it's still weird. But when you saw all the the depth to the boys that they were given um yeah, I can I can buy it. I can buy why people watched it. I can buy why it flew under people's radars yeah. and I can buy why it like jumped to the top 10 even if it was number 10 it still counts yeah so you know it's not going to be like attack on titan levels but still all things considering it was it was pretty interesting and it had you know a lot of themes that don't aren't really discussed or talked about a whole lot you know like relationships and right and and the same sex relationships and all that and love can bloom on the battlefield uh, and all that and, um, hey, Roman, this is uncensored, right? Oh, yeah. Otters are assholes. <laughs> they are, oh, man. If I ever see an otter now, man, I don't know. I just might kick it or something. <laughs> Throw a rock at it. It's like, man, these guys are dicks. Jeez. Oof. Like, that's for what you did to Mabu and Rio. I know. They just wanted <laughs> to be happy, you dick. God, otters. <laughs> Jesus. I have a, a a shirt that I got from uh, GDQ, and the the name of the shirt was "Birds Are Jerks." So now I need to make a sequel and call call it "Otters Are Jerks." Otters are jerks. Dude, they're assholes, man. I can't get over that. It was kind of funny how he kept uh, throwing little otter jokes. Oh, <laughs> when he was in a speech. <laughs> man, that's the only redeeming fact. 
factory has. Yeah. <laughs> Those are otter puns. <laughs> Man, that must have been like a pain to write in Japanese. Oh, God. And then maybe the the poor subtitlers, at least on Crunchyroll. I was like, wait, what? What are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, it was uh, it was an interesting show and an interesting take. I guess could you call it Magical Boy, Magical Girl? I mean, they did transform. Mm-hmm. Henshin. <laughs> Although they didn't use, uh, like, a staff or anything. They just traveled through Kepi's butt. <laughs> Magical butt transformation. <laughs> oh, man. I swear, the first time I saw that, I was like, what am I watching? <laughs> I'm still like that, man. <laughs> There's still parts of it that I'm still like, oh, what am I doing here? I'm just glad they only showed that part of it once. <laughs> Them actually getting pooped out. <laughs> you know what's funny too? Then that means the other two guys, the uh, the police officers, that they also went through Cappy's butt. Yeah, it's a good time. Go watch Sons on Mine. It's wholesome fun yeah. <laughs> for the whole family. <laughs> actually, has a pretty decent relationship in it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really enjoyable towards the end. Like for the first. Four or five episodes, it was the same thing over mm-hmm. and over. I was actually thinking of dropping it. <laughs> Man. And then they changed it up on me, and I'm like, oh, now we're getting into the story. And I think that reflects the rankings, too, because, it's, like you said, no one was watching it. And then, like, the middle of the show hit, and we're like, wow, we're getting some story, and, like, shit's happening. And then it's like, oh, damn, here we go. And then, yeah. And then it got good. Then we got relationship issues, and family issues, and friendship, and, you know, mm-hmm. All soccer. All important stuff. Pretty much. Except for soccer. Except, yeah. Soccer's never important. Just a rip off of football. Right. No. <laughs> and they're not cool enough to physically contact each other. Either. I know, right? So. But yeah, Sarah's on my good show. Yeah. I think I actually gave it a seven, but after thinking about it, I might, I might move it up to an eight. Okay, fair. That's warranted. I could agree with that. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. So. Because I've been I, thinking about it more, I was like, man. I actually really enjoyed this show, so yeah, I think I give it an eight now. And you know, I guess I got to give you credit. I got to listen to your recommendations more because you were the one who you were the one who watched it. And then you're like, you should watch it because I want someone to try to figure this out with me. And I'm like, God damn it! All right. <laughs> and then I did, and I'm like, well, I'm watching it, but I can't help you. <laughs> I don't know what's going on either. But yeah, yeah. But outside of the Kappa part, it's all like, yeah, the stories and the the interactions and all that. That was that was good. So, so I guess I guess what I can gather is that the otter was like. Uh, we kept saying he was a concept. I'm assuming he was a concept of despair. Yeah, right. And would just do whatever he could to make you feel as horrible and ruin your life as much as possible. Right, right. Because um, having desires just makes you miserable and awful. Yeah. So he was just like, you know, we'll just take away everyone's desires and then they'll, no one will be miserable. That's what I gathered, <laughs> at least. So. Yeah. But I wouldn't have gotten that if they wouldn't have at least told me i'm a concept because he said like three times in the last episode <laughs> i was like oh okay he's a concept see otters are dicks even in storytelling they just just otters are the worst man otters shake fist yeah i know man <laughs> goddamn otters they're the worst <laughs> but uh yeah if you haven't watched it go ahead and check it out it takes a little bit to actually get to some good story but it's worth the wait yeah totally Alright, uh, do you have anything else to add for Sarah's on my? Um, the music, the musical, like, notes or the musical scenes were pretty entertaining. <laughs> like, when they when they were doing the middle, actually, it was the whole fight scene. They they did the fights in song. Yeah. So, I'm like, god damn it. <laughs> so, I respect that. I, I respect that. That was another thing that caught me by surprise. I'm like, this is a musical? Yeah, right. Song and dance? Yeah. It was. It really was. Um... <laughs> But yeah, otters are assholes, and coppas did nothing wrong. No, they didn't. Even though they were after your butt. Yeah. To defeat the otters. Yeah, to defeat the otters. <laughs> I will say, Kepi and Sarah's like humanoid form was kind of weird looking. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that was. I don't know what that yeah. was all about. I just know he became that way when he merged with Dark Kepi. <laughs> <laughs> All of his despair and everything. <laughs> it was like some persona shit. You are me and I am you. Yes. <laughs> God damn it. But I don't want to spoil too much, so. Yeah, go watch it, guys. Let it, it. Sound off in the comments if you watched it, if you did watch it, or if you think that it's just not worth your time. Otters are dicks. Yeah. All right.
Let's go. Uh, so next on the list, Senko San. Got Senko. Or, uh, I guess you can technically say waifu of the season. You think? I mean, she was technically everything. I think every any guy wanted. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can believe that. Except that she's a lolly, even if she's six hundred years old. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, that's that's always the issue of contention. Some people still try to shame people, even though they're like, ah, oh, and uh, didn't we have this discussion previously where I said that's just people that are shaming you for loving a midget? It's like, midgets midgets can't help themselves. Like, short people that were born with, like, that deformity that, you know, where they can't grow, that's not their fault. They just got a, a raw, raw deal, you know? But they're living life. They deserve to be in love, you know? So... Even if she's like three feet tall, if her license says she's thirty-five, that's legal, bro. My whole thing is at least make her look thirty-five. Don't make her look like she's ten or eight. Excuse me, that's eight times whatever goes into six hundred. I don't, I don't do math. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you won't be spending the night in jail. Don't worry. Yeah. So that's the only thing saving you is that she's actually of age. Yes. By a, a lot. <laughs> and, you know, it's funny because uh, it's a different take on, like, Joshi Kausei, which was a wholesome show because it's just cute girls doing cute things, but this was literally cute because she's so helpful. Yeah. It's like her sole purpose was, her, her sole existence was to help. It, you know, she did everything, and it was just kind of like, that was that's what's adorable. Yeah. And... Usually what's funny is that I have a problem with anime characters that can do everything. It's like, well, then what's your flaw? This is kind of boring. But I didn't have that issue with Senko. And then even then, even though she could do everything, she did have flaws because she'd know to use technology. <laughs> and she was afraid of the vacuum. Yes. I think yes, she got that's... over that by the end of the series, though. Yeah. Well, wasn't, she was using the vacuum, actually. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, she got over it. But yeah. For a while, she was afraid of the vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when you're dealing with the the supernatural and you know, then you encounter a vacuum, that's some scary shit, man. Mm -hmm. That's just this. Be careful. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, you know, and and I, I don't know if they're going to do a season two. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised because I felt that it was fairly popular. Yeah. But at the same time, they didn't really indicate that they would keep it going. And the way they ended it is kind of like I've seen it said in previous episodes when they kind of e end it like with Shield Hero, where you know they end looking off into the distance and they're like, "We'll see what the future brings." Senko didn't really end like that. It kind of ended where it could end right there and you'd be happy. Yeah, or they could continue it and you'd still be happy. Right, right. They can go either way with it. They they could, yeah. And and so yeah I mean I'm down I could watch another 12 episodes of Tamama Lily cooking but <laughs> yeah you know I don't know how many other people feel that way so I'd watch it oh yeah. I think it was a good show yeah yeah despite uh, the other people trying to bad mouth it oh uh, <laughs> this show sucks Senko is too un un unreal it's like uh, unrealistic it's like get out of here <laughs> oh like man Demi, demigod, of right? It's unrealistic. She's got a tail, for God's sakes. You, you, <laughs> no person could eat that much tofu, you know. No, and and be alive. It's just it's in, impossible. No, you turn into a brick of tofu. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, you just turn to mush and yeah. just melt. Uh, oh man, but you know, and and I don't know. They didn't really get too much into the whole uh, ancestor. For the dude. Well, they did. That's right, huh? Um, Season two. They kind of touched on it a mm -hmm, bit, but mm -hmm. they didn't really explain a whole lot, except that, well, I don't want to spoil it, so I won't say, but there was something that happened between the two of them, and she, which keeps her going back to, like, his, his, uh, his what, descendants and, his ancestors, uh, descendants and stuff yeah. like that. So, you just have to watch it to find out what it is. Yeah. And I will say, Senko's boss, best girl. <clears throat> Sora? Yes. 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 That, Shido that's was a good lolly, see? Yeah, that's a good <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> we now have Ara Ara Fox lollies. Yeah. Oh boy. But oh. she actually kind of looked like she was mature. Right. Ara Ara. Yeah. So. Already like, then. I like Senko and, uh, what's, what's the other Shiro. one? Shiro. Shiro. 
Notice where all of them have S's for names? Yeah. Yeah. To uh, how much I'm paying attention, I just realized that. <laughs> <laughs> Shiro, Sora, and Senko. Senko. Yes. But yeah, oh, we also didn't get too much of the, the neighbor. I'm kind of upset about uh. that. I like the neighbor. I was, gonna, I was gonna say that I really wanted the the conclusion of the anime they were watching. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the magical fox girl. Was, oh, Inari san. Yeah, yeah. Her and uh, Wasenko and uh, Shiro were both into that show, right? Because apparently they're cosplaying. So. God damn it! This always is, in character. This show's so wholesome, <laughs> man. Did this show do anything wrong? <laughs> Um, no, no, no! It didn't. No, and it was like anybody that complained was immediately shunned for being stupid. It's like how can you hate on this show? It's like come on, wow, amazing! If you hate on this show, you're just looking for something to hate on. Yeah, I know. It's just you can't be happy. Jeez, just enjoy it. Yeah, it's not meant to be taken too serious. Just, just give in, have some fried tofu, and relax. Damn. Yeah. Don't forget to do your laundry. <laughs> laundry. Uh. But yeah. I enjoyed Senko. It was a good show. What's your rating on it? Uh, what did I give it? I, I usually rate them all a little differently because they're all like pretty different. Mm-hmm. I think I gave this one also like a like maybe an eight point two because you know for what it was being just a cute anime about a fox spirit that comes down and takes care of this dude. It made me feel happy. So <laughs> yeah, fair. All right. Plus, it was my relaxing show of the night. <laughs> Your, I, would, I would end that on because I would that was on the same day as Shield Hero and Wise Man's Grandchild. Oh, okay. So Senko was like my 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 anime to end the night. Got where it. I just sit there and relax and just watch a cute anime. Got it. So yeah, it did its job. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Uh, I agree. I'd give it like an eight eight point five out of ten. It was. Uh, I, I honestly, like I said, I have no complaints with it. You know, and and maybe even in a couple of months or maybe tomorrow when I wake up, I'd probably even give it a 9 out of 10. Like I said, there's honestly nothing wrong with it. You know, I I thoroughly enjoyed everything. I don't even think there was a bad episode or a a low episode or anything like that. Um, I just don't want to give it a perfect because I don't want to set my standards too high. Because if they make a season 2, I'll be like, oh, this sucks. So I'll I'll leave it like right between an 8 and a 9. And... Honestly, the only negatives that I ever saw were the people that were complaining about it. So that's nothing <laughs> that the show can do. Yeah. So the show was so good, people just got to hate on it to be different. So Then the creators fix it, and the next season she's going to be like, do it yourself. Yeah. And she's going to be edgy and sarcastic. And, just and like, everybody's oh going to be like, this is, this is way too realistic. Senko became Sen No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we don't want that. Just keep Senko the way she is. Yes, I agree. Senko season two. When you when 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 when? Probably next year or something. I don't know. I'm down. Let's go. Got a lot of lot of sequels next year. I think. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. We never learn. We never learn. Uh. I kind of got what I wanted by the end of this. Talk about leaving it at an open ending. <laughs> yeah. So I remember, what was that, like a couple weeks ago, I said that I would, as long as they end it where Fumio admits that she kind of ha- that she has feelings for him, right. I'd be happy. She technically didn't do that, but in a way, she finally got her episode. Yeah, yeah, because we were all waiting for it. Everyone else had like one episode or at least two episodes. Even the new chick got like an episode or two yeah. all to herself or about her. And it's like, what about Fumino? Yeah, she didn't get nothing until this one. Yeah, the best we got was her trying the bras on. <laughs> that was show. funny. So <laughs> she looked like she was about to die. Yeah. What'd you say? There's no God, or God is dead. Yeah, God is dead. <laughs> Her reactions are are like some of the best. And someone actually sent me one of the meme with her, like her face as it kind of degrades. And um, I told them I was like, oh yeah, no, that's uh, Fumino from We Never Learn. And I was like, yeah. And then he's uh, he the guy in this in Facebook chat. He turns to me, he goes, weeb. And I was like, hey, man, if you put out a meme and I know where it's from, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. So, you know. But yeah, God is dead. You're not cultured. Yeah, right? (laughs) But, uh, you know, like, 
I didn't have this problem in quintessential quintuplets. When that ended, I was all like, oh yeah, Ichika and Nino, or I'm sorry, Ichika and Miku, best girls. Like, Ichika definitely leaps and bounds, but Miku also kind of carries her weight too. And this one, though, by the end of it, I... They all have a strong argument for them. They do. Like, I like Ogata because she's tsundere. Like, uh... Urika. Urika. Sorry, I was drawing a blank there. Urika, because, you know, she's... Can't even you know, remember the name of your best girl. I know, best girl. Can't even remember her name. You know, because she's best girl. Fumino, obviously, we just saw. And then Sensei, it was like... Come on. How? But that's why I had to put the kibosh on Sensei, though, because I was like, if I didn't make her... If I didn't DQ Sensei, everybody would have gone for her. I was not like, that's just that's just not fair. You know, it's like the, the little kid said at the festival. It's the, the cool Bijan beauty, you know? It's like, you, you, none of the other kids can compare. You know, they're all high school girls. How can you compare? That, that was pretty funny when uh, he's talking about how she looks, Fumino looks good in the kimono. Yeah. And the kids are like, he's like, you got like the perfect uh, frame or whatever. And the kids are like, didn't the perfect, like, didn't those girls have like bodies? And she's like, stop right there, kids. You're like one step away from... From something happening. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Fumino. <laughs> God is dead. Um, but yeah, my, but yeah. You, you DQ'd her, but I didn't DQ her. My, my <laughs> best girl was the... You're, you're just going to cheat. You're just going to turn on the cheat device and play the game. But okay, if I'm going to go with your rules, then Rizu was still my best. Okay. But for me personally, it's the teacher. Uh, I mean, like I said, everybody's going to pick Sensei. Everybody's going to pick the Sensei. That's why I had a DQ her. I was like, it's, it's too easy, you know? Long pink hair, klutzy, ditzy, you know, overbearing. And great size. Yeah. Kind of soon. <laughs> and a wonderful driver. Oh, my God. Oh, man, she can drive. That kind of reminded me of uh, the teacher from Azumanga Dayo. Yes. Oh, God. Uh, and Lucky Star. Oh, that teacher was crazy, too? Yeah. The crazy driver? Yeah. Oh, no, that was the cousin. That was the cousin. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen Lucky Star, so I don't know. Really? I've seen like two episodes. Oh. That's one that I have to watch. Yeah, you have summer homework. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. You should do a react on that. I should, since I haven't watched it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe after Yuri Yuri is over. Right on. Because I still got another season of that. No oh boy. That's great, by the way. If you yeah. haven't watched it, you should watch it. Yeah. You're, you're, you're going to have a lot of uh, Slice of Life shows to be watching. I don't mind. I like Slice of Life. Alright, well then, yeah. Then Lucky Star will be right up your alley. Nice. So. Uh, but yeah, and then on top of that, they already announced that they didn't even wait, especially given the ending on We Never Learned. They're like, yeah, we're coming back in October. So yeah. I was like, alright, let's go. Just skipping one season and then they're coming back. Alright, let's go. Because, you know, Fumino needs closure, so, you know, we just can't let her go like that. I know, right? Yeah. We, we, gotta, we gotta do something for her. Plus, I think Rizu needs some kind of, uh, <laughs> some kind of love, too. So is it the glasses? I do like girls with glasses, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's a great argument, you know. It's the opi glasses, and she's soon today, and she can cook. I mean... Yeah. It's pretty solid. Pretty solid right there. So, it's it's like I said, they all make a strong argument for themselves. Then again, Uruka can cook, too. It's true. She just doesn't have the glasses. She has everything else. Tomboy. <laughs> yeah. Athletic. Yeah. Yeah. And we still got our, uh, what do you call it, um, dance MC <laughs> with uh, Uruka in the pool. Yeah, that, uh, man, that episode. He's like, um, that was good and all, but you used my name, so try it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, there's a reason she used your name, dude. You know, it's, it's amazing that this only happens in anime because, you know, if, if any dude was ever in that scenario, you know, unless he really didn't want to be with them, that's the only outcomes. If there's nobody that doesn't know how to pick up on signs, and that's the magic of anime. <laughs> oh, I'm kind of dense. I, I can't really... You know, you... Whatever. Okay. All right, then then you would be him. I would... Remember I, he po I posted that image mm -hmm. of that one where it was like uh, Lisa sitting on lying on the bed? Uh-huh. And it said, uh, after you figure out that someone was hitting on you four years later. <laughs> and I said, well, nobody was hitting on me, but I did figure out that some, or, but I did kind of realize that someone was trying to hook me up with somebody back in 2004. 
<laughs> Let's get some F's in the comments for our boy Roman, please. <laughs> so, man, ouch. That's how dense I am, people. I am uh, harem protect. Yeah, I was about to say, you're a harem protect. <laughs> Congratulations. But without the harem, so. Oh, man. Double sad. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Uh, this is, like, the only show, I think, where all of the girls have... Uh, potential have, have potential yeah i agree like any any episode could be like oh well she's best girl now yeah yeah you could like <laughs> pick one and then you'll fight to the death but on this one it's kind of like every week it's like okay uka is the best one and then the next week is like no wait no i like ogana oh wait no sensei sensei's great oh wait no fumino oh shit it's yeah the new girl <laughs> yeah purple girl medical girl uh, did did you notice in the uh rankings that F- fumino and his ship jumped up four spaces after that episode oh yeah Oh, yeah. Beating out the teacher. Beating, yeah. They're all on there. All five of them are on the rankings, which is amazing. Yeah. But, you know, it was also the same thing with quintessential quintuplets. All five of them were on there, so. Yeah, it's it's pretty funny. Yeah. I remember posting, they're like, well, it looks like everybody jumped on the Fumino train after that episode. Yeah, I think they were just waiting. Yeah, they, yeah. they just needed an excuse, and then they finally got it. I guess, uh, well, she can say she's the only one that's slept with him. God damn it. <laughs> Get your minds out of the gutter, people. I know, right? The worst thing about this is that he, Roman is not wrong. <laughs> uh, I was, uh, Let's move on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what's, the, what's the next show? Let me see. Uh, Isekai Quartet. Isekai Quartet. One of my favorite shows for this year. Ugh. In conclusion of the show, I want to say that I welcome our new overlords, Kazuma and Tanya. Like, when they, they first said this project was announced, that's all that I wanted, was Kazuma and Tanya to interact. And then oh, to God. see them end the show together, that was perfect. Yeah. Absolutely the best. That was awesome. And, and I know that Roman is just trying to... Th- he's in his head right now. He's like, how can I bash Tanya? I want to bash Tanya. No, I've, I, I've told you multiple times that she is pretty good in this show. I like her in this show. Why don't you like her in her own show? Because she's horrible. <laughs> Would you say that she's evil? Uh, I don't know. The... Evil might be pushing it. No, yeah, she's pretty evil. <laughs> Even before she became a little, he became a little girl. He was pretty evil. He's just doing his job, man. <laughs> so you're gonna be mad at a guy just doing his job. You have to be happy that you ruined someone's life. <laughs> yeah, you know, if his job is professional life ruiner, then he's doing pretty good, I'd say. <laughs> he's just doing his job, earning his paycheck. And he got killed for it. And then you see that didn't deserve that. It's r- rude. He didn't deserve to die. No, but should have been a little nicer. <laughs> Yeah. Tanya did nothing wrong. Nobody deserves to die just because you were doing your job. Yeah, exactly. Tanya did nothing wrong. So, hi, kitty. See, because Kat heard it, we were talking about Tanya, so Kat's all like, yo, y'all talking about Tanya? And it's like, so you're like, Tanya is like doing all this, but then Cosma in, in the episode admitted that he's a scumbag. So why, are, why don't you hate on Cosma? Because he admits it. <laughs> he's open about it. Everybody knows what Kazuma's deal is. He's not afraid to admit when he's a scumbag. (laughs) (laughs) Kazuma. Like you said, Darkness even said, you're a total scumbag if you don't want to win this. And he goes, then I'm a scumbag. I don't care. I don't want to go. I'm happy here. Oh, man. If anything, everybody else is a scumbag for forcing him to do it. Okay, so you're going to make all of this justification for Cosmo, but when Tanya's just doing her job, Tanya's a jerk. He just wants to, he just wants a happy little quiet life. Tanya wants a quiet little life! <laughs> so why is Tanya evil? Oh. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> uh, anyway. That's why they joined forces to make the scumbag army. Yeah. I'd watch that anime. I would. I would absolutely <laughs> watch that anime. I would. That would be the number one show. 
Uh, but yeah, Kazuma was great. Everybody was pretty great in this. Set. Anybody they focused on really was pretty great in this. Except for Amelia. She did nothing. Amelia was great in this. I loved it whenever she was like, she'd say something and Kazuma, I mean, uh, Subaru would be like, nobody says that anymore. <laughs> like, it's quitting time. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get that. Was that something from the original show? I don't even remember them doing that joke in ReZero. They actually do it in the OVA. Oh, is that where it's from? Uh, I think it's in the light novels more. Got it. But, but uh, I know in the OVA, they, she says something, and Kazuma's like, nobody says that anymore. Subaru. Yeah, Subaru said. Uh, says. You're not wrong. Right. Right. Same, same to, fucking guy, I was same character. It's hard because they're practically the same The person. same character. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, Subaru says, nobody says that anymore. Yeah. So, yeah, she did that twice in Got Isekai it. Quartet. What was it? Oh, he's ca- she's causing quite a hooting and a hollering. Yeah. And he's like, nobody says hooting and a hollering anymore. <laughs> You see, okay, everybody, I, I can admit, she's, she's a little boring. But I just find her completely adorable, okay? That's the whole thing. I just look at her and I'm like, man, I just want to protect you. <laughs> Alright, Subaru. <laughs> I didn't know I was recording with Subaru today. You're going to uh, EMT, right? <laughs> yes. Jeez. <laughs> uh... Darkness was great in this, and she only got a, like a few episodes of Shine, but she was amazing. Uh, she was too busy doing uh, push-ups. That was like the best episode. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, yeah. That push-up scene, man. It um, it got Tanya's troops to break character, to break rank. <laughs> We're just like, those are amazing. <laughs> They were impressed by her stamina. Well, that one guy was like, yeah, she's doing those pretty quick. That's not what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> See, everything Tanya touches it turns to gold, man. It's just amazing. Uh, Tanya had nothing to do with that. <laughs> those guys would have been staring at her if Tanya was there or not. Uh, however, it is kind of funny how afraid they are of her. Oh, well, Every yeah. Every time she like does anything kind of rampagey that one guy like foams at the mouth <laughs> I don't even know their names I know one's Reiner but I don't know <laughs> same I don't know which one it is same I mean w- when I get the my hands on the movie maybe it'll make more sense but until that time yeah me neither yeah those guys her her squad yeah the, the squad I don't even know the girl's name what was her name Visha Visha okay yeah, yeah. Really? That's the one. Hayami saw what he does, Visha. I don't know their names. Oh. I don't know the VA names. <laughs> like, you could tell me a name, and I'm like, cool. Who do they do? <laughs> See, that's what was hilarious about it. When Tanya first came out, it was the same season as Kakigurui. The only one I remember, and that's because it was brought up recently, was Takahashi Rie. Uh, yeah, Emilia and Megumin. Yeah. Yeah. And Mash. And Mashu. Mash. Yes. yes. Yeah. And Takagi-san. But yeah. we're not talking about Takagi-san, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, takahashi is, is also everywhere and everything. Yeah. But, um... I saw an image on the Discord that showed what she was in this season. Takagi-san? Yeah, other than that, she was in, like, three others. Jeez. Why am I not surprised? Uh, let me see this. Keep going, keep going. So, um, no, I, I shouldn't say same season. So, Tani came first, and then Kakigurui came out next. But it was funny because in Tanya, Aoyuki is the crazy one, and Hayami Saori is the normal one. But then in Kakigurui, uh, Hayami Saori all of, all of a sudden goes crazy, and then Aoyuki became a ho girl. Okay. And just became dumb. So, she's an Isekai cheat magician as Rin Azuma, the main, yep. one of the main characters. Okay. She's in, uh,. Josikose no Murazukai, okay. uh, Kanade Nimo, Nimo, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, and uh, Tejino Senpai. Who is she in Tejino uh, Senpai? They haven't shown her yet. Her name is Madara san Oh, okay. It's the black haired, lo- the long haired black girl. Interesting. The, yeah, black haired long girl. Oh, so she, she'll be coming. I don't even say it. Yeah, she's going to be coming soon. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. We'll talk about that too next time. <laughs> Stay tuned. Yes. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah. It's a good times. quartet. Great. It was, yeah, I mean, well, I, don't, I don't know what else to say. You know, I'm just going to turn it into a show about uh, Tanya. I haven't even talked about Overlord. Those guys were just there. You know? <laughs> I did like Albedo. She was oh, yeah. in this. Yeah. Um, and and, uh, and uh, Shaltir. 
Yeah. Shaltir was good too. Especially when they started picking on her for being flat. <laughs> Thanks to Aqua. The only thing you need to be ashamed of is patting your chest. <laughs> you don't give that poor girl so much shit. She doesn't do anything wrong. Aqua, Aqua is innocent. Aqua's awesome. So she, she didn't mean to pick on Shaltir. Yeah. She didn't know. Yeah. Aqua is just trying to help y'all. Because y'all keep trying to go to Eris. And she's trying to tell y'all that you shouldn't trust a goddess that pads her chest. Yeah. All right? And y'all just want to be hating on Aqua just because she's saying the truth. Yes. Uh, so Aqua just trying to help y'all out. And then Aqua punked uh, Ainz. That was fantastic. Oh, yeah. What, episode 2? Yeah. When she used to um, God blow. Turn, turn undead? Yeah. I knew it was going to happen. Like the moment, like after after they she saw him in episode one, I was like, she's gonna try to turn undead him. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a good thing it wasn't a uh, sacred turn undead. Mm. He might have died. Uh, Such a good show because he got hurt with just a normal one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he was okay, I guess. I don't know much about Overlord, so all I know is that there was one reactor who kept going on about how. Ainz could basically one like one shot every universe that was in that show. Okay. And then when um, uh, oh god, what's his name? Dude from Rezero. Shibaru? No, the the knight. Oh, uh, Reinhardt. When Reinhardt showed up and he heard his divine protections, he was like, "That's stupid. <laughs> That's stupid." <laughs> That's the joke. And it's, yeah, but it was like because. Ainz can't just automatically kill this guy. It's stupid. That's that's why it was stupid to him. <laughs> this is why being a fanboy hurts sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, I was super happy when I saw that, and he was like so upset about it. Mm. I was like, yeah, that's right. Your dude can't one shot the Rezero universe. <laughs> really? Not even Tanya? No, your dude, like Ainz. He was an Ainz fanboy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is that you think Ainz can one shot Tanya? I don't know. Tanya's pretty strong when this, she wants to be. That's what I'm saying. Uh, I was saying that he, he believed that Ainz could walk through any one of their universes and just defeat everybody. I mean, I, I think that you and I are at a disadvantage because we haven't seen Overlord, so we can't really say for sure. Yeah. I mean, that would be like me just saying that, oh, well, if Rimuru shows up in season two, Rimuru wins. It's just going to eat everybody. It's like, eh. It's kind of true, though. Well, you can eviscerate a slime, though. That depends on whether his, uh, what do you call it, protections? He's got, like, resistances to just about everything. Still. Including pain, and the only thing I don't think he's resisted to is poison. So you'd have to poison him. It's just saying it's possible. I, I would, uh, you know. Yeah. Also, speaking of which, speculation on who was uh, coming in the next season. Oh, I, I Is it gonna be Shield Hero? Is it going to be slime? <sighs> or do you think they'll throw a twist at us and it's just going to be uh, Union? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't I don't know because I thought that these... Um, the series that they chose were all from like Kodansha or Kadokawa. And so that's what I thought why it was e or they were able to do it. So without knowing what's the common thread between the three series, I, I, I honestly don't know. It could literally be anybody. I mean, if I were to put money, though, I would say it's probably Slime. I'd say Slime. All I know is that those are the only two Isekais that people keep speculating are coming in. Shield or Slime? Shield or Slime. Yeah. So they must have something to do with them. Yeah. Because, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because um, Tanya and Overlord are, like, the same publisher. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I don't know what's up with ReZero, though, but whatever, you know, ReZero is ReZero, why not? Well, they're Katakawa, so... Okay, then, yeah. So... And isn't, um... Isn't Konosuba Katakawa as well? I believe so. So that's probably... If they're the same publisher, then why not? Mm -hmm. But, yeah. I don't know. Don't you have a Shield Hero uh, manga volume here? Yeah, but I could also look it up. It'd probably be faster. So... Oh, you don't know where the book is at? <laughs> no, it's, it's, like, right there in front of me. I just don't feel like reaching it. Oh. So, 
Let's look it up. You My phone that. autocorrects to shield Herc. <laughs> you do that, I'll look up slime. Okay. <coughs> uh, let's see. Published by Shosetsuka. Oh, so maybe not. Well, light novel. Media Factory. No. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> the reprise of the Spear Hero. The re Oh, the uh, Spear Hero one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's just Yen Yen. Okay, um, Slime is Kodansha. Oh, so maybe Slime. Maybe Slime. So right now it's looking more like Slime than Shield, but who knows? Yeah. Maybe they got permission to use Shield. But we won't find out until next season. We'll, s we'll see you next year. Yeah. I was so glad they ended it the way they did. I was like, uh, I don't want them to go. Can we have a second season? It's rough, Talia. Oh, yeah. I actually got an uh, MP5 of her. I'm so happy. I've been using her a lot, actually. She's pretty good? Yeah, I think so. I have her. I should probably level her up. Yeah, level up your Talia. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I, 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 yeah. Probably, probably slime. Yeah, probably slime. Yeah, because, and slime was already airing before they began production on Isekai Quartet, so they had already basically known about slime, so I think that that makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. But Now the question is, who are they going to bring in, other than Rimuru and most likely Shion? Maybe Milam? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Gobu? The... Go Gobta. Gobta, there you the go. The little goblin. Yes. Yeah, probably him. Yeah. And then the wolf. Oh, yeah, the wolf. What was the wolf's name? Uh, dude, that was like three seasons ago. <laughs> <laughs> I've moved on. <laughs> but wolf. <laughs> Maybe the prince. Maybe. I don't know. How many people... I, don't, I mean, it would probably be I think it's like all, the, their, all their most popular characters. Yeah, it'd probably be Rumuru and the whole ogre squad, honestly. Probably. So I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't. Because they all had their gimmicks and they were all like, you know, basically the uh, equivalent of uh, Ainz's squad. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't see why they would let, leave them out. It'd probably be them, Gobta, and the wolf. That's his squad. So. And Milam. I would throw And meet him, yeah. Well, meet him, I think, would show up later on, like uh, Yun Yun did. Oh, like as a. As like In a guest. class? Yeah. <clears throat> She's like, oh, I'm bored, so I came over. Ha 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 ha. Oh, and they stayed around, so they're going to be in season two as well. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> uh, that was funny with Reinhardt. Oh, I got a tug of war uh, divine protection. No, you don't. <laughs> so <laughs> dumb. <laughs> so dumb. Oh, my God. What was it that he said when uh, he let them fight the, the mobile fortress? My... Let people take the spotlight divine protection. Yeah. <laughs> this motherfucker. <man. laughs> oh, boy. But yeah, Isekai Quartet was great. Yeah, go watch it. Definitely I mean, one of my favorites from the season. Uh, from the year so far. Yeah. I was and, looking forward to it when they announced it, so. And remember, who's at the two, uh, was it the Isekai charts? Cosmo and Tanya. Oh yeah. Who didn't make the charts? Ram. <laughs> I guess. Amelia was number ten, so I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Who did absolutely nothing? Also, Ram was Ram was pretty great in the uh, OVA, so yeah, you should watch that if you haven't. Yeah, I don't think I have, so I probably will. if there's Ram if Ram is in there, then yes, I'll probably watch. Ram it. is in there. Excellent. So, yeah. So, since we already brought up Shield Hero, let's just dive into it. Shield Hero, yeah, I guess go. that's a good segue. Um, so, I forget what we left off on last time, but... Uh, I mean, I finished the whole thing. No, I mean, like, in the last episode when we were talking about oh, it. Oh, uh, I mean, they were all pretty much on the ship, and Queen was there. Queen gets them to the final waves, and then the people that they were training with, the dude and the, the girl, turns out that... Yeah, they were they're, they're from heroes from another universe. world. 
and they're also fighting to save their world, and then it turns out the big bad girl, the big bad woman, is Close. also another hero from another world, the same world as them, and it was like, what the hell? And then, like I told you, it ends with Naofumi staring into the sun saying, the future it will be ours, and it's like, yeah, it's a season two. Which they haven't officially announced. No. <clears throat> I don't know when they will. Yeah. But they definitely should. It was a good watch. Yeah, no, it was it, it was good. Everything... It, there was definitely some lulls, some slow parts, but yeah. I, I think that... <sighs> what am I going to say? I think that one of the low parts for me was actually when he finally got over his beef with the other heroes, and then it's discovered that they're utterly incompetent. Like, we got all this build-up, like, the heroes are badasses, they can do anything, and then, you know, they're gonna save the world and anything, and then these other three he- doofuses are losers. What are they? They're useless. Like, what? Gee. Oh. You see, it's them you should hate, not Aqua. Right. <laughs> right. And it's, it's, it just bring nothing of value to the table, and I'm just like, God damn it, just put Raftali in there. Raftali, are you go fight? It's basically what they did. Yeah. Yeah. So, and even at the end, and then now Fumi poached, uh, what's his name's, uh, the, the girl that was helping him with the wine. I liked her. Yeah, he even poached her, his team member, his teammate. I was like, go now, Fumi. I think. Grow that harem. I think she was the, the one in the uh, episode where they were having the banquet that got hit with the pie. Yes. Where she's trying to turn, like, come around the corner, and be like, everybody needs to stop. Yeah. Pie in the face. Yeah. I liked her since then. Yeah. That's when I liked her. <laughs> Any girl that's willing to take a pie to the face automatically becomes number one. All right, you guys heard that. Roman likes the ooh wow 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 types. Uh, fleshy kind. Of, I don't know. For me, she kind of reminds me of Canon from uh, Hello Happy World. She does the same, uh, like no, like uh, upset noise that, like when she's like sad or something. She just makes the same thing. Ooh does wow wow thing. wow 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 wow. Uh, yeah, kind of. You know, at some point, maybe this summer, I'll actually get around to watching that. We'll see uh, okay. if I can if I can fit it in there. If I can if I can get to Bang Dream, but yeah, I mean, I I I liked Drunk Rough Talia, and so um, when I when I say I, I wrote, play Rough Talia, I'm talking about Suzuka goes in in Fake Grand Order, by the way, for the non FGO people, and basically. Since she came out in the middle of Shield Hero Fever, everyone just was like, oh, wow, that's Raftalia. Even though Suzuka is a fox and Raftalia is a raccoon, they, they, but they both use swords. So they were like, fuck it, it's, it's Raftalia. So when I actually got uh, level 5 of my Raftalia, I actually did the drunk Raftalia, like, air fist. Like. So. <laughs> oh, wow, she actually survived? What the hell? Wow. We're just watching him do the challenge quest right now in FGO, and Hanako Green actually just beat Alter Lancer with Raftalia in seven turns. Wow. Keep going. Okay, so, <laughs> sorry. Um, so, yeah, no, Raftalia. Raftalia. Raftalia was. I, did, I don't know. She definitely started as waifu of the season, but I don't know if she necessarily ended it. I'm looking at my options. Eh, maybe. Maybe she did. Maybe she did. So, because I'm looking at my options here, and it's like, you know, everything else might land you in jail, and then Senko-san will just put you in a coma. Too much fua fua. But, I don't know, you know, like, I, I just, I appreciated Raftalia's, like, ability to get stronger, and it was more natural than like a Shonen Jump character. And you can actually see her evolve and, and become stronger through not just her own like force of will, but also because she had the support of Naofumi and, and Philo and all them. So I I don't know. I think that I, I, I like that. I, I like that take on Raftalia and all of that. And um yeah, I don't, I don't know what else to say. You know, like I said, the ending was very open, so that we can get a season two when they decide to to drop that on us. Um, and you know that 
Shield Hero is actually going to be at Crunchyroll. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the uh, one voice actress. Well, the voice actress for Bitch is going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's going to be, like, the animation director or somebody's going to be there as well. So, I'm thinking about taking my manga, and I'm going to probably get that autograph. The one that I got autographed at Kino Kuniya, what was it, two months ago? Yeah, the party 10? Yeah. So, I'm probably thinking about taking that. And then, um... Yeah, so that'll be fun. I mean, I'm going to be there, so I might as well go do something fun. So, you know, I'll go check out all the Shield Hero stuff. Should be cool. Um, and I believe that's in September. No, no. Yeah, I believe that's September. September. Yeah, I believe that's September. Huh. So, yeah. It's another con I won't be going to. Oh, <laughs> rip. I basically can't go to any cons. It's, it's bad. Oh, man. It sucks. Well. But, uh, I'll try. Yeah. I'm trying to go to like something other than Fanime, and that was just to make money. <laughs> it worked. It did. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, see, I see where you're coming from. Raftalia did start off as the waifu and then just kind of went down. Just just stayed as Raftalia. Yeah. And it was like, it's not a bad thing, but it's also kind of like when we're getting introduced to all these other characters and other waifus and all that, and you know, you have like We Never Learn, and all of them are really good candidates for best girl and Raftalia is still just Raftalia it's just kind of like eh. that, I mean you know she might not even have been best girl in her own show because when the queen showed up it was like oh fuck queen is milf yeah monarch I'd like to form an alliance with <laughs> no dirty thoughts yes so I mean you know Raftalia didn't even become the best girl in her own show anymore so yeah oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah, when the queen queen showed up and like just stole the show, so yeah, yeah, the queen definitely did. I was definitely on board with the queen. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, yeah, yeah, and then she's like, "From now on, your name is bitch." Except when you're out on an adventure, your name is slut. Alrighty then, we'll roll with that. So. Uh, and, I, and that was kind of funny, too, because I, I thought that there might have been a Japanese term for that, but they actually just do call her beachy. So yeah. I'm all like, okay, that's pretty That's pretty good. I'll take that. I will take that. Um, but yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> like I said, it's it's hard for me to form a conclusion in because they left it open-ended, which is something that I've always been talking about. In, in shows where the manga is still ongoing, you got to kind of leave it open. So it's, you know, just like this, you know, he's staring off into the distance and it's like, you know, the future is full of potential. And then here we go. We just go. So, yeah. Well, I mean, he just got his own country. Or, well, not country, but... Like, city, uh, state, or town, or... Something like that. Yeah, land, basically. Yeah. So. I'm surprised. I'm actually not surprised, but that Spear Hero still has her around. No. Well, he did tell her to shut up, though. He was all like, you know, check yourself. You know, don't, don't jump to conclusions and all of that, so... Yeah. Yeah. He's not just believing everything she says, no. Yeah, he, he kind of wised up, so props to him for that, but... He's still a putz. And he seems to be kind of moving on his way to Naofumi's side. Yeah. Like, we should go visit sometime. Yeah, right, exactly. So, Because, you know, he, he knew that he messed up. So, yeah. You know. Good for him. Yeah. He's on his way to redemption, but not really. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, still Motoyasu. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. So, we'll see when it comes back. Whenever that does. Yeah, whenever that, whenever that does happen. Yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll let you know. Yeah. And you'll probably have known by then anyway. Yeah, oh yeah. Because it'll probably be everywhere. Yeah, including the page. Yeah. Follow, make sure to follow the page. Facebook and the Discord. Yes. I do post stuff there too. <laughs> so, or closing... Even the, uh, even the Twitter. And the Twitter, yeah. Closing closing thoughts on, on Shield Hero. I enjoyed it. Um, but it definitely wasn't the best Isekai series I've seen. Uh... But it was good for what it was. It did do something a little different than most of the other Isekais, though, where he was kind of degraded from most of the show. Mm -hmm. And then had to redeem himself. Um, and the revenge against uh, what's-her-name was awesome, too. Bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
Just so you know, yeah, I still do refuse to say her name. I don't care what it is. Um, yeah, the, the redemption against her was awesome. And the king. Trash. Trash. Who well, was still trying to conspire. Jesus. The queen caught him, in the, like, red-handed. <laughs> and she just gave him a, what am I going to do with you kind of look. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> At least hang him out the window for a little bit. I know, right? Seriously. Uh, what a bitch. <laughs> but yeah, queen and possibly the new girl. I like the new girl. So, yeah. Quite nice. Not a Melty fan? Melty? Nah. I mean, she's cool and all, but... Nah. Too young. <laughs> save, save yourself from jail. Yeah. Alright, so the last thing I have for anime is Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer. So let's go. Uh, okay. I must have rewatched that episode with Zenitsu like six times, seven times. <laughs> Why? Because that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, specifically which episode the one where he falls asleep oh okay all right i just watched that i think yesterday actually seeing him do something even though he was asleep yeah was pretty awesome so pretty much he like powers up when he's in a trance no he's just he's just asleep he's passed out uh from what i've heard and read it's basically his fear just kind of overtakes him and he passes out because of it okay and then he just does his becomes job. like a badass until he wakes up again. Interesting. So that explains that. Yeah, I, I was wondering if they were ever going to get to that or explain that, if they're just going to leave it a mystery. But okay, that makes sense. Also, it was pretty funny when that demon was like, I'm going to suck your brains out through your ears, and he just snapped <laughs> and just collapsed. <laughs> uh, Zenitsu's great. Yeah, he's got he's got potential. I, I have to admit, I was kind of getting a little irritated with the whining, and I was like, "Oh man, shut up!" But I, I normally have a high tolerance for for things like this, but in in his case, I was just kind of like, <sighs> I, "I don't know." I never had a problem with his whining. I thought I still thought he was funny, but I could see why people would dislike him yeah. because of it. Yeah, it can get kind of annoying and old after a while, where he's just like. Screaming and trying yeah. to run away and hiding behind people and yeah. stuff, but I thought he was hilarious. I, I think the best moment actually was at the end of this week's episode or the most recent episode where he's just all getting mad. Oh, and he's just I, like, "How could you be traveling with such a cute girl? You know, you you've you've hid this for me after I got my ass kicked for you, and you didn't even tell me about this." I didn't do all that just so you could make out with some girl. <laughs> Like, didn't even get to explain that it was yeah, his and, sister. And, yeah, right, and, and, and Tanjiro is just like, what the deuce? What up? Hold up. Wait, wait. Chill. Relax. And, oh, what's his name? Enosuke? Yeah. Boar. I didn't like him at first. After he lost his mask and he started his little rivalry with Tanjiro, yeah. then I started to like him. He's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> Him, him too. It's like the one guy that won't stop whining and the other guy won't stop yelling. And I'm like, oh, poor Tanjiro. <laughs> He's got quite the pair with him. Oh man, it's it's definitely an interesting take on the Shonen Jump squad trope. You know, like how Goku <laughs> had his squad, Kenshin had his squad, Yu Yu Hakusho, what is it, Ureshi or whatever, he had yeah. his squad. And so if this is Tanjiro's squad, it's kind of like, oh boy. You got one that's constantly afraid and yelling, and you got one that wants to fight him at every sec every second of the day. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> this is going to be a long show. <laughs> I I think I'm going to love it though. Yeah, I'm still involved. <laughs> yeah, you know. and um, uh, they they had their their panel at AX, and I was curious. I was like, oh, they're going to make an event out of it, and it turns out their announcement was that it was going to tsunami. So, that should be cool. Um, it got... Basically, Senpai noticed it. And what's interesting, too, is this is going to be the first uh, Studio Ufotab show on Cartoon Network. At least that I can recall. Um, if there's been another one... I don't remember props. any of the other fake shows being on there. Yeah. What else, what else have they done? Oh, man. Karano Kyokai. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just, I only really know them from the Fate stuff, from the Nasuverse stuff, honestly. Then no, I don't think anything from theirs has ever been on there. Yeah, <coughs> so this is, this is going to be really, really interesting. So, 
and I don't even know, I, you know, I'm really not interested in the English cast, but whoever they get, props to them. Yep. It's so, a paycheck. So. Yeah. So, but. Do it if, justice, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Or else you'll hear from us. Yeah. So. We are, we don't mean anything to anybody in the community, but we'll, we'll talk. Yeah. <laughs> Roman, Roman will get so angry, he'll just pass out and then goes in and sue on somebody. Yeah, exactly. Ah. <laughs> uh. That, that might make me so mad I'd pass out. I'd have to take a nap. English <laughs> 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 dinner! But out. <laughs> oh, uh, man. It was, uh, what, two or three episodes before we saw Nezuko again? At yeah. The end of this last episode? The, the whole thing, the whole time. The whole time they were fighting the Taiko drum demon and the other demon, the nothing, no Nezuko. They were like, nope, this is the boys' time to play. And then it was like, oh, and then, at, you know, this one, three episodes, three episodes of no Nezuko, then we get Nezuko. For like two minutes. Yeah. But it was so funny when they actually finally showed this ice difference when Nezuko's in the box and then she gets out and then she like fully extends. I was like, okay, she, she a big girl. It's like twice the size of that box. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. Still cute. Still yeah, was, adorable. I was kind of wondering that too. Like, how big are you really? Yeah. <laughs> Man, she just kept growing and growing and growing, and I was like, "All right, now you get it. Now you have an idea of how big Nezco is and how small the box." <laughs> it's good times. It does make sense though, because she would have to be kind of small and light for him to be able to carry her like that. Correct. Yeah. I remember at one point he was carrying um, Nezco and does uh, in it too. Yeah. So. Tanjiro is pretty strong, actually. Yeah. And I think that's why I'm, I'm liking Tanjiro. You know, again, I have that, that problem with those Shonen Jump main characters that are always just so strong for who knows why. But, again, I think that Tanjiro is not giving me that vibe because we've seen him train. We've seen him go from absolute shit to, like, god tier. Yeah. And you can understand why, you know, because he just, he put in all that work and effort. And I know someone's going to be like, well, Goku train. Like, nah, 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 nah. Fuck Goku. Goku came to the planet strong, all right? He when he was a baby, he was strong. Didn't he like blow up the spaceship or some shit when the grandpa Goku found him? No. Uh Piccolo blew up the spaceship. Okay. When uh it released in a hologram of the moon and turned Gohan into the great ape. Okay. Into the Ozaru. Got it. Then Piccolo found the ship and destroyed it. Got it. Okay. But uh What did Goku destroy? Yeah, when baby Goku came into the plan, didn't he do something? He killed his grandfather. There you go. He became an Ozaru, though. There you go. Because the moon came out and he stepped on him. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. Why? Well, Dragon Ball. That was Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball. Yeah, Dragon Ball. But, uh, yeah. Why? <laughs> Why? I think they said, what, Tanjiro went through two years of training? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I remember watching one reaction where somebody's like, I like that they actually did that because sometimes they do it and they don't give you a time frame. <laughs> and you're like, what was this, like a month or something for them to get this strong? <laughs> but they actually said, no, this is like I, I did this for six months. I did this for another six months. This was for a year. So it's like, yeah, okay, we got a time frame for how long you've actually trained and done everything. One Piece gave you a time. Kind of, yeah. One Piece told you two, to, two years. Oh, what? For, for the... For the yeah. time skip? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they did give you a time frame on that. Yeah. So, good good job on One Piece. Always, uh, you know... Consistent. Consistent. <laughs> um, always setting the bar. Yeah, right. So, yeah. It, yeah. So, that, like, I think that Tanjiro is, is growing on me. I think that he's, he's kind of like... I, when I first started watching the show, I thought he was kind of a dork. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I thought he was a dork. I thought he was a nerd. But now I'm really warming up to him too, so he's more like my boy. So you know, and he and you know, him and Nezuko are are, are precious brother and sister. So protect. He's still kind of a dork, but not in a uh, yeah, not an but annoying you know, kind of way. He's doing his best. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm I'm glad that it's going to continue. Um, again, I'm obviously I'm a fate whore, so anything from Ufo Top usually has my attention and. I'm going to stick with this one for sure. So uh, I'm looking forward to what they're going to, you know, keep going, and I'm going to stick with it. Or... Yeah. Yeah? Going to keep going? All right. It's going to be a fun watch. We're going to keep going. 
I'm taking a look right now on what uh, Hanako Green is fighting. So he's now doing the Babylonia boss fight. So, by the way, Tiamat, even though Tiamat doesn't actually speak, Tiamat just kind of goes, ah, that's actually Aoyuki. Aoyuki does all those noises. Well, he's smart to not have her talk. Wow. <laughs> I'm kidding. Wow. <laughs> You know, or maybe she was smart for taking the job where she didn't have to waste waste her voice. One of these days, way, Roman is going to be in the grocery store and he's going to get a headbutt by this little blonde girl, and she's just going to smile, and Roman's going to know. Roman's going to know why. You're like Tanya? Yes. <laughs> and I'm going to be like Tanya did nothing wrong. You say that about Homer too, though, and she did everything wrong. <laughs> we can talk about Homer in a minute. <laughs> So actually, that's that's the next thing that I'm going to segue into. But let me wrap this up real quick. So in conclusion, yes, Demon Slayer is great. It earned its respect. Uh, Demon Slayer is also was like in the top five of this season's shows, and so absolutely yeah. earned every every accolade. Um, Ufotab, even though, like I said a couple weeks ago, they were kind of scummy with how they did the whole embezzlement thing. They're still one of the best animation studios out there. So. Yeah. You know, separate the art from the artist, and uh, we move on. And they're gonna keep going, and I'm gonna keep watching. Actually, I think in the poll you you did you showed yeah uh, they were what number three yeah pretty much like Demon behind Slayer? Attack on Titan and uh, the uh, Fruits Basket. Or I, I think it was like it might four. have been four four might yeah have been four yeah because it was number one was Carol on Tuesday yes and ah. then Attack on Titan and then uh, Fruits Basket no Fruits Basket was next yeah then Attack on Titan yeah and then Demon Slayer yeah I think. I think that was yours. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right. Sounds right. But, yeah. I was just happy Carol on Tuesday was number one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Somebody who's been pushing that show. Mm-hmm. Do you have any thoughts on that? What, Carol on Tuesday? Yeah. Uh, Carol on Tuesday is amazing. Uh, they just did... I was telling you the last time that they were doing that, uh, like... American Idol type show, mm-hmm. uh, Mars Brightest. They just finished that up. That was the midway point where they finished that. Um, kind of ended how I expected, but also not how I expected. In that, Carolyn Tuesday actually got disqualified from the competition because they they weren't in the studio when the show started. But they still got to debut because they made an exception after they performed and said, okay, you know what? We'll just let you go ahead and debut with the winner as well. So I was like, oh, well, okay, that works for me. They got what they wanted. Interesting. Uh, I'm pretty sure everybody still agrees that the best song so far on the show is Galactic Mermaid, which is the song with all the swearing. It's like nothing but swearing. By, uh, I guess they would be trans people. Yeah, I think they would be trans. I I can't contribute to this. I have no idea. So I'm just going off your knowledge. I mean, I am interested in the show, and you said that it's going to be on Netflix on the 30th of August? Yeah, the first half is going to be up on Netflix on the 30th of August. So I might might check it out if I get some downtime, for sure. It's definitely a good watch. I mean, it's by the same dude that did Cowboy Bebop and Samurai Champloo. So, oh, there, there you go. Yeah. And Space Dandy. So <laughs> he's, that's already three right there that I know people really enjoyed. Yeah. So, I mean, can't really go wrong. Yeah. But I can understand why it's so popular. I remember uh, one guy on the Discord was like, the, the summary just sounds so boring, though. <laughs> And I was like, well, I mean, it's a music anime. What, what yeah. Do you <laughs> music animes are hard sells because if you don't, like, appreciate the music or get into the music like Love Live and Long Dream, it's hard. Yeah. This one, though, the characters are all really good, too. So. Okay. Because, I mean, that guy does characters really well. Right. Yeah. That and I like uh, that they actually got, the, like, different people to do the singing voices. Oh, okay. Like, they, like, for Carol on Tuesday, there's they actually got a black girl to do... Uh, Carol's voice. Okay. Uh, which apparently a lot of people were impressed by. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, cool. They got somebody to match the voice. Like the character. And she actually kind of looks like Carol. Like the characters that play... The, like the characters kind of look like they're uh, the singers. So maybe that's what they did. They modeled the the characters after the singers. Yeah. To make the models look right. I, that was actually pretty cool. So I watched the behind the scenes thing. They have a 
like a three uh, videos on YouTube for that, where they go into like the production and everything for the show. Hmm. Uh, they did not show uh, the Mermaid Sisters, though. <laughs> I would have liked to have seen who was uh, saying all those swear words. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I've been uh, really enjoying it. I did, it was on a one-week break. Mm-hmm. They did just a recap episode, and <laughs> I don't know why. Because, <laughs> you know, it's the end of the season. So that's like the buffer. I guess. Yeah. But uh, it comes back this Tuesday, this Thursday. Okay. So get to see what they're going to do now that they've... Uh, got their chance to debut and get out into the music industry uh it's gonna be fun good stuff yeah so that is it for our anime yeah i think that's it for anime all right because uh i'm not gonna try to talk about fruits basket again after (laughs) last time (laughs) well we can, if you want, next time, next episode, we'll touch on Fritz Basket and, and One Punch Man. And then, like we said in the beginning of the show, we're going to, uh, next starting next episode, we're done with all this stuff. Get out of here, Shield Hero and Isekai Quartet. So we're going to start talking about uh, the current stuff. And, um, I mean, out the gate, I, I was, was it, we, Tanjin Senpai or Timjin Senpai, Tejina Senpai. Senpai, the, um, was it the, the Ocean or the Survival Show? Son and Deska. That one, um, Waver Anime, which I'm going to oh, yeah. talk about in a little bit during the Fate segment. Do you um, love your mom? Mom and her two hit attacks, which as the as of this recording hasn't shown yet. No, it's this Saturday. Yeah. Um, which, I, I don't know, sometimes uh, I was looking at the release dates for some of the ones I was watching, and they mm-hmm. were actually released a day early. Well, you know, they're ahead of us in Japan time. So, you know, the time difference, yeah. And yeah, then, but then some of them were released the day they said they were supposed to be. Well, some of them could be official, <laughs> like, because they go directly to Crunchyroll, so it's like a simul release. And then some of them could be delayed slightly. I don't really like understand. I know, what, what? I know Vinland Saga. Mm-hmm. That was supposed to release Monday, was released Sunday, and they released three episodes. Right, I heard about that. I think my friend was talking about that last night, and they said that now they're going to be on hiatus or something until, like, the end of the month or something like that. Yeah, I didn't know about that part until yeah. someone mentioned it in the comments that yeah. they were going to take the next couple weeks off because they yeah. released so many episodes. Yeah. And I was like, thank you. Yeah, so mm-hmm. they, they went on vacation. I should they, have they spaced out the episodes. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Well, yeah, because that was, like, I'm going to segue into the AX thing because there was a lot of like AX news and all of that that they, they announced like I said they, they showed the next episode of Demon Slayer over there right um, they on the video game front I shared this on the Facebook page but um, Way Forward showed off the trailer for the new Shantae game and that trailer was done by Studio Trigger so you know the Kill I Kill guys I think the, you and I may have posted that on the Facebook page both? Because I think I did that, and then, like, a couple days later, you did that. Okay, makes sense. Um, what else? And then also from Way Forward, I don't know if you saw it too, but they did River City Girls, which is the sequel to River City Ransom, but instead of the two dudes, Kunio and his buddy, it's the, the two girlfriends now going to rescue Kunio and his buddy. So now you play as the, the girlfriends that were kidnapped, now they're the main characters beating up everybody, so <laughs> it looks pretty fun, I'm not gonna lie. And... You know, as a, a, a beat-em-up guy, you know, play beat-em-ups left and right. So it has my interest, so I'm going to be checking that out. Um, what else did they know? I mean, I, uh, there were so many thing, little things. I can't remember them all, but AX was... It, it had a lot of announcements and, and whatnot and going on. Um, man. Maybe we can find a list and post it on the Facebook. Yeah, I'm going to have to get back on all of the, on all the little things. Um... Most of my news feed was full of the, the FGO road tour and all of that. And it was, a, it, I discovered that there was a Wonderfest exclusive that was um, Saber Artoria Alter Rider. So the one made Alter, basically, that's going to be in the summer year two. Um, they actually had her Nendroid there. Oh, did they? It was a Wonderfest exclusive. So previously it was only sold at Wonderfest. And they were selling it at AX. And I was like, well, fuck my life. And I had no idea that they were selling that. Wow. And and so I just randomly took a look, and now I can find it on, on like, Google. Just doing a Google search, I found it for, like, 80. 80 bucks. And I'm like, well, 
I'm just gonna wait. Hopefully it comes up on the normal website, on the Good Smile website, but yeah. So, Made Alter, Nendoroid, exclusive at Wonderfest and exclusive at AX, and I was like, man. Oh, boy. That's how it goes. That's how the cookie crumbles. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, seeing the video game announcements there, um... The concert, the Love Live concert went down. The earthquake hit the concert. That was fun. Um, it's like, stop it. Yeah. Stop, stop this idol stuff. <laughs> go get a... Get, what's the name of Ron's band? Afterglow. Afterglow. Go get Afterglow. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think that instead of stuttering the rest of this, I think that... I'm with Roman. We're gonna have to go and find like the the good stuff that happened at AX, and um, pull from there. Yeah. Oh, um, the one thing that they did introduce. So, Anaplex was not only doing the Fate Grand Order Road Tour when and AX was a stop, obviously, but they were also debuting the no, the new Madoka Gacha game that came out in America, and they didn't really announce it. At least I didn't see it. But they brought out Shiwasato, the voice actress for Homura, and they just busted her out, and she's just there on stage talking about the Madoka game and all that and I'm like bruh no one said no one knew about this no one said anything I I discovered this while watching Toho Sniper who is a uh, FGO player and he makes YouTube videos and he streams and and <laughs> Roman Roman's showing me the game it says you must be 14 years of age Roman you can't play that you're not 14 so I hope you get all the Madokas I hope you get every single Madoka because I know you love Aoyuki. Uh, I'll just turn her into uh, stones or something. Wow. <laughs> wow. This is why Homura <laughs> is always angry. And um, I'm just angry because she can't do anything right. Wow. Listen to this guy. <laughs> this guy. Man. All right. So then who do you like in Madoka? Uh, Kyoko. Oh, yeah. Kyoko, obviously. Kyoko's the best. Basically everybody else. Wow. Even Sayaka? Yeah, I had a better appreciation for Sayaka after the second viewing. Wow. Third viewing, I should say. Wow. And Mommy? Yeah. Mommy wasn't even there. With and without her head. My goodness, this guy. <laughs> so, I think it was the movie, the third one that did it. For like That got me a, like, a better appreciation for Mommy. But the show was just, you know, what it, what it was. Man, this guy... I don't even know why I do this anymore. <laughs> Anywho, yeah, Chiwasato came out promoting the uh, Madoka game. I don't know if I'm gonna do it. So if if you if you're playing it, then let me know how it is. I I can't I can't. Azure Lane was there. actually I think the, all the mobile games were there because to my knowledge, Azure Lane was there with voice actresses of their own, um, and they did autographs. Okay. Because um, uh, Kawasima or Ku Kawasumi, who does uh, Artoria. She was there. Okubo Rumi, who does Astolfo and all the Elizabeth Bothroys, she was there for FGO. They did not do autographs. Chiwasato, who was there for Matoka, did not do autographs. But the voice actresses that came out for Azure Lane did do autographs. So I was like, what? So I was like, okay, that's interesting. All right. Kind of weird that you'd bring them along and not have them do an autograph. Session. I know, right? Toho was also talking about that. He said that uh, Kawasumi hasn't done an autograph session in like three years. So I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Maybe they, they're they just tired. But they were also doing panels, though, throughout the weekend. So, like, Kawasumi was, like, doing multiple panels of different topics and all of that. And it's like they just busted her out because she was there. So, you know, they just touted her there. And I'm sure they did the same with Okuborumi and all that. Um, so, uh, yeah. But, um, yeah, FGO, Azure Lane, Honkai Impact, um... What was it? The Sacred was it Sacred Sacred Seven? Oh, uh, I know what you're talking about. Um, Sacred, or, yeah. The, well, they were there. Um, and girls, girls Frontline was there. Girls Frontline. Yeah, they were all there. Hmm. So it was like all the mobile games were representing. And what's funny is remember when we did the E3 recording, and I said, "Why aren't the mobile games there?" Because they're at AX. They're at AX. <laughs> there you go. And I said that too. I was like, "This, you know, I don't know if that was a smart move or, or, a, or a silly move, but 
Maybe it was just not the right audience. Maybe they were the E3 audience would just you know not have even cared. But the the AX audience, boom, all over it. Well, more anime like so. Yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, Bang Dream, the game was there too. Yeah, uh, yeah. Bang Dream was there too. They had a they had a tournament for that. Yeah. The winner got a, a Minato Yukina figure. Oh wow. Well. Yeah. Well, a limited edition um, had a special finish to it. Would you have played if you were there? I wouldn't have gotten into the finals, but I would have played just to play. I probably would have lost because of stage fright. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm in front of everybody. Well, that's I'm not, I'm not going to get too into it because that was like Toho Sniper's giant rant. It was almost like an hour long because FGO did something similar where it was a, a damage challenge. Right. Basically, just do as mu- the most maximum damage you can do. Um, and he kept getting kind of snubbed by one of the guys that worked at the booth. And, like, the whole stream, he was just going off and off and off. And so, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that, you know, they did a tournament and FGO did their own damage thing. And so it's like they all kind of did their own versions within their own games of getting the high score, basically. So yeah, um, that was that's, that's kind of funny that you mentioned that. But that I'll, I'll leave it at that because, like I said, he, he, Toho, he went off so bad, it almost felt kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> and I, I know that Toho acknowledged it. I know that Toho knew what he was doing and that he was really ranting hard, even though he said that, you know, it didn't really bother him and that it'll probably fade away after a while. Just like any good rant, when it's fresh in your mind and fresh on your feels, you're just like unashamed. You know, you're just letting it all out. And I think that's what he, where he was at. But yeah, man, he, he really went off about that damage contest. So hopefully that didn't happen on Bang Dream. So no, no, no got, I didn't hear anything about that. No one got that, that salty. Um, Although it was a score, you know, high contest, score, high yeah. score contest. Yeah. So oh God, the, I think the last song they played. I don't know if it had to be an expert, yeah. but it's the, like the hardest song that's been released so far. It's a, like a level twenty nine. I think the highest one before that was a twenty eight. So, yeah. Oof. And it's a Rosalia song, so it makes sense since they gave away the I mean, not to you can a figure. Mm. She's the lead singer to Rosalia. Got it. Well, maybe next time. Maybe next time. Next time. So that's it. That's all I really got to say about AX. Um, maybe one of these years we'll be able to go and we'll do like a like an event type of thing. Yeah, maybe. Maybe well, yeah, I'm, I'm down for that. We'll 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 see. We'll see. see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, it would be nice to do something for like and tie it into the anime mystics as yeah. a, as a as a con thing. Mm-hmm. But uh, we'll see. I'm, I'm, we'll see. See what happens. Yeah, we'll see. Um. So I'll, next up on my agenda, I, I'm going to go into video games for a brief minute. Alrighty. So, uh, I'm going to start by saying that SGDQ. I'm going to start with SGDQ. Okay. So because that was one of the things that when we last recorded, I was mentioning about, and this kind of ties into the other two games I wanted to, to touch on: uh, Samurai Shodown and Bloodstained. Um. So. SGDQ, it came and it went. If uh, you haven't checked it out, it's basically it's a week long event that they did. I believe it was in Minnesota, and it was all speed running. And they did games of all kinds, like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega, uh, PC, PlayStation, PlayStation Three, PlayStation Two, um, hacks. They even did like Mario Maker. Um, you name it. Yeah, they they were all over the place. The whole playlist is on YouTube, so if you look up like SGDQ 2019, you can see the playlist. Just go go down it. You might find a game that you like. Check it out. You know, most of them were pretty good, especially Sunday. Sunday, the first day was shockingly good. I thought that oh yeah, I can break away. I could probably do. It. I was like no, I found myself like watching the whole day Sunday. Um, and then, like, right after that, on Monday, they did the Castlevania block, and I was so mad, because when they started doing <laughs> Symphony of the Night, I had a doctor's appointment. Oh. And I was like, are you kidding me? So, I, yeah. Um, so I had to watch go, it. guess I'll die. Y- yeah, right? No doctor's appointment. No doctor's. <laughs> Symphony of the Night, man, I'll just die. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that that was pretty cool. Um, and then on, on Saturday, when they ended it, they did a... Uh, race in Super Mario World and ended it with Chrono Trigger and they made over three million dollars in the charity wow so um what charity is it again this was all for Doctors with Doctors Without Borders ah okay so Medicine Sans Frontiers okay so yeah um yeah there was, I feel that there was like a little something for everybody and um 
before the stream started, I told Roman that they did Command and Conquer to Red Alert 3, and they were actually watching the, the awful cutscenes, the cheesy cutscenes. So <laughs> instead of like just speed running and skipping the cutscenes, they actually let it play for the crowd. They actually let the cutscenes play because they were like, watch this, guys. Watch how dumb this is. And so watching like Tim Curry speak in a Russian accent, it was, oh my god. It was the greatest dumb thing ever. Um, and so, yeah, you know, and, it, and I went, like, in 2016, I went to the SGDQ, and I saw it live in Minnesota, and it was, this was when they did it in Minneapolis, and it was, it was cool, you know, it was really, really cool, um, it's the one thing that, like, the two events that I follow is, like, SGDQ and Evo, it was like, I'm on it, and so, you know, and they're two totally different things, one's fighting games, one's speed running, but, Still, to see the communities kind of come together and, and mesh well. And the FGC people have actually gone to GDQs in the past. Like, we've seen James Chen and F Justin Wong and Kane Blue River have gone there. And as a matter of fact, Justin Wong was actually at AX. That oh, yeah? schmuck, yeah. Hmm. Um, shout outs to Justin. <laughs> I love you, Justin. Don't let, I'm, just, I'm just messing with you. Um, yeah, so there, there's a lot of crossover between the two. So, you know, video games are video games, and you'll often see some of these FGC guys, they'll just get so bored that they'll just start playing, like, Zelda 2 or Resident Evil or something just because it's something different for them. So, you know, it's, I even saw, like, some of them were playing, like, Mario Maker 2 when that came out for the Switch. I was like, okay. So, you know, um, speedrunning has mass appeal, and I, I, wholly, I highly recommend it. If you guys get the chance... Go go get the playlist off YouTube. Just scroll down it. Find a game that you're familiar with and and watch it. Check it out. Um, and and hopefully you like it. Maybe you will want to try it yourself. You can learn a, a trick or a glitch and you'll try it out. And who knows? Maybe we'll see you on the stage someday. So um, definitely, uh, it was a good show. It was a good show. Sounds like they had a lot of good games. So yeah, yeah, they did. It was it was very well put together. So. Um, and that leads me to the the next game that I wanted to touch on that I'm I'm slightly mad about, but because again because of um, Castlevania, Bloodstained came out, and I was like, oh, okay, Bloodstained. It also is coming out this week, but I didn't get it because I don't want to spend any money because of Evo. So, but it looks fantastic. It looks literally like a 3D Symphony of the Night, and that is not a bad thing by any stretch of the imagination. I saw that you get to, like, change all the costumes and all of that, and that looked really fun. Um, and yeah, and then I even saw that they made the uh, the spin-off or the, the tie-in title by Into Creates, the guys that did, like, the Mega Man Zero games and all of that, and I was like, oh, man. So, uh, as soon as I get back, from, as soon as I touch down from Evo, I think I'm going to dive right in and, and get Bloodstained, so... Um, if you have played it, though, I'm curious if anyone in the in this listening to this has played it. Uh, by all means, let me know what you think about it. If it was good, bad. Um, I've heard nothing but positive things so far, so I'd be very curious as to see why people would not like it or what they had gripes about. So uh, I'm all ears. You know, I I'm, I do read articles and reviews, so by all means, please let me know. Um, yeah, and then the last video game news that I wanted to talk about was Samurai Showdown, because that came out, and I was excited when I saw that my classic waifu, Shiki, came back, because Shiki was only in, like, Samurai Showdown 64, the 3D one, and, like, Gal Fighters, and, or, yeah, Gal Fighters on the Neo Geo Pocket, and SNK vs. Capcom, which, in America, only came out on Xbox, the original OG Xbox. And nobody so, played that system. No, <laughs> especially not for Japanese games like fighting games and stuff. Like yeah. no way. So, um, and then today I shared, or last night I shared an article that said that oh, the the producer they put in um, sexy characters because that's what the fans wanted. And I was like, see, this guy gets it. Instead of making a game pandering to a group that may or may not buy your game, usually may not. Yeah. He they, he just was like, no, this is not what my fans want. My fans want this, so I gave them this. And I respect that because in this day and age when we just pander to the loudest people in the world, who in the room, who aren't even the consumers or the, the audience, this guy's just like, no, I'm not going to do that. So 
I, I have nothing but props to them, and, and I love SNK. I love everything that they do. Well, most everything they do. They, they have made some duds, but, you know, when they were in bankruptcy and they got out of bankruptcy and then they came back, you know, it's it's been a transition. But, you know, even when they were SNK Playmore, I still stuck around with them, and I, I trust them. So hearing that really fills me with, with confidence that this new Samurai Showdown game is solid. I have seen some people play it, like, like Spooby. Spooby, please. And Art, I've seen Art play it as well. So um, I, I have faith that this is going to be good. And that's something else. I know that it's going to be featured at Evo. So if I get a chance, I'm definitely going to check it out. But this will be another game, too, that I'm going to pick up when I come back. So I'm looking forward to, to Sam's show. And, uh, yeah, I hope it's good. I hope it looks good at Evo. And I hope that we get some good matches out of it. So, yeah. Um, and that's pretty much it. I might come back around to Bloodstained and Samurai Shonen after I get some hands-on with the two games, but I just wanted to throw those out there, uh, because that's all that I know of, basically, for the whole summer. Oh, Fire <laughs> Emblem that comes out, like, right before I go to Evo, but I'm probably gonna talk about that when I get back from Evo, so... Right. Yeah. So, that's it. That's all I got on the video game front. That's all you got for video games. I don't really have much for video games. Uh... I don't really know anything new that's coming out. Yeah. It's kind of a dry spell right now. Yeah. The only thing I've ever really talked about is Bang Dream, and <laughs> this last event was just okay. Okay. Uh, it was a Pastel Palettes event. The second band story. Basically the same as the last two band stories. <laughs> They're going through a crisis, and they work their way out of it. Got it. Basically, they all started overworking themselves because they were uh, doing side projects. You know, they're the actual idol group in the show. So they have a production company and everything like that that gets them jobs and shows and stuff like that, does their songs and all that. But all the girls are doing, like, little side jobs, uh, like commercials and other things like that. Eve, she does modeling as well on the side. So, um, and... Chisato, their bassist. She's an actress as well. She's actually got a role for a movie, hmm. which is going to coincide with like practice for their show that they had coming up. So it's going to like really overwork her. Hmm. And they were a little worried about that. So the, the production company was talking about putting them on a hiatus yeah. until she was done with the movie. But none of the girls wanted to do that. Except for Hina, my least favorite out of the whole series. But I still like her. Basically, Hino was like, okay, I don't care. You guys were getting boring anyway. I was thinking about leaving. Wow. <laughs> so, if we break up, I don't really care. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Hina. I know you really don't care about much of anything except for your sister, so whatever. But that kind was of, a little harsh. <laughs> kind of a bitch. <laughs> she uh, just speaks her mind. She doesn't have a filter. Uh, but of course by the end they don't break up they don't do anything they go on their show they do everything everything works out like I said like the last two band stories where they had a little conflict and then they worked it worked out yay happy ending yeah Uh, so yeah plus I'm not the biggest Pastel Palettes fan so this wasn't like an event for me Uh, but I, I read the story and everything and it was still you know decent but like this reminds me of the last two so maybe you should have done something different with that mm. <laughs> as long as Afterglow and Happy Hello Happy World don't go through the same thing uh, then we're good because they still have band stories coming I think interesting uh, I know they got a new event coming out the lolly people will be happy because it's going <laughs> to go into uh, childhood of uh, Higumi and Kasumi okay. where they're actual children uh, I think I had something that, like showing for that. Oh hmm. yeah. Oh. <laughs> FBI on speed dial. Yeah, FBI on speed dial. I think they're like, they look like they're under ten. Yeah, dude, they're like five. Yeah. <laughs> uh, kind of goes into something they mentioned in a comic where Hagumi was saying that her and Kasumi used to play when they were little kids. Yeah. Uh, but I guess they kind of fell out of touch when they got into middle school or something because yeah. 
they had seen each other for a while until they went wound up in the same class in high school, and then Higumi didn't even realize it was her uh, until she spoke because she had a different hairstyle. That's all it takes. <laughs> it's like Clark Kent. You don't know, don't know he's Superman until the glasses come off. Yeah, cause they even mentioned that in the comic where they're like, "How did you not know it was her?" And Whoa. she goes, well, it's not like she had those cat ears, because Kasumi's hair is like cat ears now. She has like these little things right here. Amazing. And uh, Arisa, the keyboardist for Poppin' Party, just got like kind of irritated. And I was like, how, how, how is that not, how do you not know it's her just from her hairstyle? <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> uh... I'm trying to look it up. They actually have the comic here on the uh, on the game. Okay. You can, like, read all of them on here. <laughs> See, they have little side in-between things, too. <laughs> <laughs> wow. They do a lot for this. I know. I'm, I'm impressed. It's like, I think they even do more projection than Love Life. I haven't really seen a whole lot for Love Life recently. Yeah, it's there's, been kind of falling off. There's still a lot of figures getting made, and I see a lot of them. I'm like, these yeah. actually look pretty nice. Yeah. And I've actually thought about getting some of them just because they look kind of cool. And I, I've told you before, I don't care what if I like the show or not. I'll get a figure if it looks cool. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of getting a couple. I think I have one on pre-order, actually. Nice. I don't I don't know who it is, though. <laughs> uh, wrong one. Let me see if I can find this right here. Uh, but, yeah, the thing, I don't know what we're getting into with this new event because again i don't really play the japanese version and this is stuff that's all like old for them but it's just like fgo yeah just like fgo yeah. they're just catching up yeah so but i didn't look up anything to see what was going to happen in this um unlike me where i'm on the website like every day like all right i gotta plan this out yeah i gotta know how to execute i gotta know it's coming out pretty much I, i'm not that not like that <laughs> oh, yeah. Bang Dream. Oh yeah, I'm very methodical on my my mobile games. Um, I think do I do that with anything actually? I don't know if I do that with anything. I think the only thing I kind of kind of was that crazy for was Overwatch at the time, mm. where I was constantly trying to you know figure out who the new uh like characters are going to be like i'd look at all the clues and stuff and i would never figure it out but <laughs> well you just you know you had a job you had a, things to do man you don't you can't have you don't have time to find out who is sombra true i didn't have time for that uh although i'm pretty happy with sombra i like sombra <laughs> did you get the nendoroid no but i i was going to buy it at um fanime but I ended up not getting it. I ended up getting the uh, Ishtar. Better choice. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I like Ishtar more. So we'll, we'll we'll touch on that when we get there. Actually, what's funny again about Shimasato is that she does the Japanese voice for Sombra in Overwatch. Oh, does she? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, here you go. All right, I'm reading a comic. Yeah, it's gonna be a little silent for a second. I'll just try to make some noises here to keep it from uh, getting. You know, too too silent for you people. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I kind of get it. I get get like that with Bang Dream a little bit. I look up the events to see what's coming up, but I don't like go. Oh, let me see if anybody's posted stuff on uh, YouTube about this. Have any discussions or stuff like that? I do go onto the, the Facebook though. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> The power of hair. <laughs> oh, goodness. And Ari, so she doesn't just not have any of it. Yeah, just no selling it. <laughs> uh, yeah, hopefully the, this is another thing, too. That if I can knock out Bang Dream by this summer, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. I'd like to check it out, so we'll see. The anime, we'll see. Cool. Because they have the third season coming out in January or February. Oh, boy. It was supposed to come out in October, but they pushed it back. Uh, but they are doing a, a movie in October, I think. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So, yeah. Cool. All right, well, I think that now that Roman touched off on uh, Bang Dream, yep. that leads into, I guess, my final segment, which is the, the fate segment, where I'm 
wanted to discuss the status of JP USA and the anime because there's some anime news that came out. Um, so for those of you that are not fate people, uh, I guess this is what we'll wrap up with you fine fellows. Yes. Um, Roman, any, any thoughts for the, the anime people in conclusion? Uh, anime people, just let us know what you're watching this season. Uh, how you've enjoyed the, f well, by this time, a lot of the first episodes have already aired, except for a few. But let us know what you thought of the first episode for a lot of the stuff you watched. Uh, again, we'll get into that in the next episode, but I would like to hear what your thoughts are on this season so far. Mm -hmm. Um... Or if you want to wait a little bit, because it's going to be a couple weeks, and you want to reply in, in like a week when everything has come out, go ahead and do that. Yeah, yeah. If you have any thoughts on what just ended, what did you enjoy? What did you did you have any good moments? Like, was there anything that stood out to you? And anything Shield Hero Senko? Anything? Um, or what are yeah? Like Roman said, what are you looking forward to? Did anything catch your eye? Did any? I know that we threw some names out there, but I'm, there's like. <sighs> Like, what, almost 100 animes this season or something? There's a lot. I'm personally watching 14 right yeah. now, so... <laughs> I don't even know. It's a busy season. Yeah, yeah. And and this is supposed to be the time when any, everyone's going on vacation and everything, and it's still like, nope, you got 20 shows to watch. And this guy literally has Mato Sakura on his banner. Poor guy. Oh, <laughs> Sakura did nothing wrong. So, um... I'll agree with that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... I haven't seen the other here, though. So, so yeah, for the um, for rest of you folks, um, we'll see you again uh, in about two weeks, three weeks' time, next episode. We'll dive right into the next season, or the current season, I should say. Um, yeah, I guess uh, that, that'll about do it for these folks. Right. We'll see you next week. All right, you guys. We'll, well see you the next, next week one. in a couple weeks. Yeah, we'll see you on the next one, guys. <laughs> Peace. Bye. All right. I think they're gone now. <laughs> All right. I'm now just, the real party can start. Yeah. So um, here at the the fake corner, I'm going to I'm going to go down kind of what I feel is order of relevance, and I'm going to try to get us all out of here fairly fast. Um, and also, I'm going off what I know. I'm a little out of my league right now on what's going on in, on the JP side. I do know that currently they are in the middle of Gouda Gouda 4, which is being labeled as the final Gouda Gouda event, and um, some of these characters look really good. Um, I actually did end up rolling Mori, who looks like a goddamn Gundam. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. That, that was, he was pretty fun. I haven't used him at all. I just, I just rolled. I didn't even think about it. And then yesterday, I had a summoning ticket, and I just, I got it, and I used it, and I actually ended up getting Nobunaga Avenger. So, I love Nobunaga Avengers design. Like, holy shit. Like, the whole Ada Ada thing, where she actually becomes, like, the full, like, woman on fire. Where was this Nobunaga this whole time? <laughs> holy crap. Avengers. Yeah, Avengers. <laughs> yeah. So, do, have you seen any of the artworks that I posted? Yes. Okay. Can't miss them. Yeah. Yeah, she's an Avenger class. Five star. And I'm like, and I got it on a ticket, and I was like, not even expecting it. I just wanted to use the ticket, and I actually got, and I'm like, wow, wow. All right, luck was on your side then, <sighs> for real. Um, and then there's the the new welfare, which they said is supposedly uh, Kenshin Uesugi, but I I haven't confirmed it. So uh, I know that it's the most recent character from the manga. So um, yeah, I'm gonna have to get back to everybody. Um, and as of, I believe, this morning, they are also doing um, a, a special event with Craft Essences, which are all based off the mangas, based off the Epic of Remnant storylines. So, to commemorate the mangas coming out for EOR, they're doing in-game Craft Essences that are, like, the, the covers of the manga. So, I think that's pretty cool. They're doing, uh, they did all of them. So they did Shinjuku, they did Agartha, they did Shimosa, they did Salem, and they even did um, CCC. So they did the FGO CCC, which is not to get confused with the actual Fate Extra CCC manga, the official manga based off the game. This one is the manga based off the event in FGO. And I was like, okay. And I kind of was taking some peeks at it, and it looks really legit, like the artwork is really good and all that. And I've seen the scanlations are coming out. Um, they did the first, 
like two chapters they translated into English, but they didn't quite get to the part where Melty shows up and meets up with uh, Gudau. So, Are yeah. So Melt Lilith. <laughs> I just because of Shield here, yeah, I just call Melt yeah. Lilith Melty. I'm just like, oh Melty. So that and also Melty is also like four feet tall, so it's a little like the same height. Okay. So I just call Melt Lilith Melty. Um so yeah. Um they're they're celebrating the release of the mangas in Japan with these craft distances. So um who knows if we'll see them. Um it would be nice if the Epic of Remnant mangas got picked up and licensed in English. That'd be I would buy them. Shit. Um, the Shimosa one is pretty funny too because they actually did like the twenty nine faces of Musashi. So Musashi is basically notorious for always doing like different facial expressions. And what's also interesting too is that, at least in terms of the CCC manga, that one uses Gudao. But the Shimosa manga that does that is uh, Musashi's story uses Gudako, so they're basically interchanging between Gudao and Gudako between the mangas. So I think that that's a nice touch because you know you can do that in game too. You can switch between male or female at any point. So to use them kind of interchangeably, I think is actually pretty pretty rad. So I give them props. I give them props for that. I don't know who is being used in the other ones. I just know that they exist. And I've only seen the cover of Shinjuku. But, yeah. And and they were being done simultaneously, too. So, yeah. Check them out if you get a chance. Look them up. Uh, you can probably find the scanlations for most of these. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a cool little side thing going on in JP. And I'm probably going to do Gura Gura pretty soon because I, I do want to get my free welfare servant. So, yeah. So, uh, and I'll let you know how Ara Ara Nobu is when I get more hands-on with her. So, that's kind of the state of what's going on in JP right now. Meanwhile, um, on the other side, what we're going on here in the States, obviously AX just happened, the FGO Road Tour came in, they did the second year anniversary, uh, Albert went up on stage, he did the panel, um... Obviously, we're getting a bunch of free stuff, so be sure that you're doing your logins. Um, also, there's just a bunch of other random things going on. The daily quests are all half off. Uh, when you level up, you have a, a triple chance of getting super success, great success. So the, those uh, rates are increased, and I can tell you from experience, they do work. And uh, the Sherlock banner is going on. So, uh, I did yeah. get, I got my Sherlock the night of, so, yeah, and I immediately paid for it because my guaranteed was just a Tamama Lancer, which means she was my second copy. I think, uh, I think I remember you saying you might, you would, wouldn't be surprised if you got her again, when we were talking about that. Tama did I say that? I Tama think you did. I remember you mentioning her. I, I was like, you know, well, I got Tamama Lancer for, uh, New Year's in Japan. Yeah, I think it was because I was saying, watch me get somebody I already have. Uh -huh. And I think you said, yeah, we'll probably get Tamamo. <laughs> and you did. I did. It was, um... And, you know, it was it was a, a sad kind of disappointment, because it was like, I was expecting two outcomes. Either I was going to get trolled, and, like, get Artoria Saber or something, or I was going to get someone one. that I really wanted, you know, like Musashi or Enkidu or something. And I got neither. And it's like... So Mama Lancer is not bad. I actually used her in the CCC event because she helped me with the Emia boss fight because she has a, a charm which basically works as stun. Right. So we were able to keep him stunned because I did two Tamamos in Skasaha. And okay. so I was able to basically keep him stun locked and then I just cheesed him with uh, Noble Phantasm damage. Hmm. So she's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. She's not bad. Right. But it's just not someone that I was expecting. So, I'm kind of empty. There was only two ways I was going to be disappointed. If I got Gilgamesh again. Uh, or if I got... Well, anybody that I already had. Yeah. I only have like four or five five stars. So, the chances of me getting somebody new was pretty high. Right. <laughs> One in 52, so... Yeah. Uh, I didn't get Iskander like I wanted. Mm -hmm. But I did get uh, Raiko. Yes. Which I also wanted. Yeah. So it, it did work out for me. Yeah. 
And that's good too because I know that you were trying during her event last yeah. month, so it worked out. I was trying to get her. Yeah, it worked out. She knew. Mm-hmm. Mama always knows. Um, I've almost got her to level sixty right now. Good, good. She'll help you really farm too, especially with the hands. She'll put in a lot of work on those hands. For the. Uh, uh, the, the farming experience cards? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. right now they're half off, so it's half the AP cost. So with Mama Raiko, she's basically, that's where she excels at, because she can almost one-shot cards, or the hands. Okay. So, yeah, she's really good. Nice. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, second anniversary. Um, and then what else we got? We obviously got the memorial quests are going on, which I didn't think they were going to bring back because we already had them in the beginning of the year. But they brought them back. And so it's like, okay, well, then we're doing this again. And, uh, yeah, ran through those. Um, did you get your quartz for the uh, stuff that you did? Played yes. Through okay. Yes. All the quartz that you get for every chapter that you completed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, clean that out. Um, what else? Paul Bunyan's quest is going on, so make sure you go get your free copy of Paul. I'm working on that now. Yeah, it's, and it's pretty funny. I like the story. I really did like the original story that they made. So, it's so American. And that's <laughs> something else. I have to respect Albert and company because they put that out for the 4th of July, and that was such a good play. I was kind of irritated because I thought that the whole anniversary was going to start with Paul Bunyan, and I was like, no, no, no. They gave us Paul Bunyan for the 4th of July. And then they kind of went from there. So and then, you know, when AX happened, then they gave us the rest of it. But yeah, I thought that that was a nice little nod, you know, because a huge issue was that a lot of people always felt like disrespected or ignored because, you know, oh, we're Americans, we're the secondary uh, audience, the secondary market. But the Japanese overlords finally acknowledged us and they were like, here's some free quartz for the 4th of July and we'll give you this American based event for an American holiday. I thought that was pretty nice. Nice. So, um, and as well, I did post this on the page, but there is the Paul Bunyan mini game that it came out on Saturday. And the idea was once we as a community got to a certain threshold of points on this game, we were going to get free stuff in game. We beat the game on Saturday. Like by before the panel started, the game was already complete. We met all the milestones, and so they're going to give us all of our free stuff on July 17th, I believe. Nice. So they said that, oh, we're going to determine at what <clears throat> what date, what later date we're going to give all the, the rewards, and it looks like they determined it was going to be July 17th. So, good job, team. Go, team. But um, I still say go play the game. It's it's pretty fun. It's like, when, it's like playing those old, like, Facebook games when those were a thing still. Yeah. And it was like a little Flash game. You know, so it, it was pretty dumb. It was pretty fun, though. <laughs> so, and be be on the lookout for the uh, hidden stage. So, uh, get good, go really hard, and uh, good luck on the, the special stage. Good luck, guys. Yeah, check it out. Um, And then, yeah, and then they didn't even end the announcements because they immediately, or at the same panel, they also said that we're going to get the summer rerun on July 12th, which, as of this recording, means it's coming out on Friday. Yeah. Did you do last year's? Uh, no. I did not. You get Summer Skasa, huh? So you get the, the purple old lady. Nice. So, um, that'll be fun. And then, <clears throat> that's, um, even for those that did it last year, you should do it this year because you're also going to unlock uh, Mashu's swimsuit. And she introduces the, the dress sphere system, which is basically like Final Fantasy X 2, but... They also call it Dress Sphere. And so, basically, you'll get to uh, change out Mashu's costume and put her in the swimsuit. So, pretty much, no one's going to ever change her after this. They're going to all put her in swimsuit and then never never change her back. But, that's just how it goes. Um, And then they didn't even end it there. They gave us the preview trailer for Summer Year 2. And then they just said, coming soon. So, there we go. Summer rerun and then probably right into Year 2. So at the rate this is going, summer year two is probably going to be right when I'm in the middle of uh, Vegas at Evo. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, I guess I'm going to roll for swimsuits in the middle of the desert. So, but yeah, um, that's the other thing too, is that if you get a chance to go see some of the parts of the panel, um, 
Because there was a lot of part like when they were talking to Kawasumi and they were talking to like uh, Okubo Rumi, a lot of their interactions were actually pretty funny. And someone actually asked like Kawasumi, the voice actress of Artoria, they said, if you were actually in a Holy Grail war, who would you want to bring? Like what servant would you want to bring? She straight up said Merlin. And I was like, that's the most Artoria answer to ever say. And she's just like, well, you know, I don't want to die. <laughs> and I'm like, God damn it. <clears throat> um, that's a good reason. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, Okuborumi said uh, Ozymandias. Because oh, she's yeah. like, oh, he's so strong and he can heal himself and he can, like, strengthen himself up. And also, he's handsome. And I was like, God damn it. Oh... So, Osmandius and Merlin. Yeah. Your two favorites. I know, right? I just can't win. But that's fine. <clears throat> that is, uh, that is a okay. They're entitled to their opinion, no matter how wrong they are. Um, they also got um, Kawasumi to do Saber Alter's uh, Excalibur Morgan. Right. So she did the whole phrase, and then, you know, she did the Morgan, you know. And everyone cheered because it wasn't lame ass vanilla Excalibur. Uh, but then they got um, they got Okuborumi to do uh, Elizabeth Bothroy Lancer. They got her to do her Noble Phantasm, and it was just kind of like you know the the line and all that. But she did the uh, the ending from um, Elizabeth's animation update where she goes Bleh! basically like she's <laughs> singing off key, and I was all like, okay, that's pretty funny, that's pretty fantastic. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> so yeah, so if you get a chance though, definitely go check out the panel, go watch the interactions, I think that they did a fairly good job with it, um, and yeah, and th another interesting note too that they asked Koasumi was because she's like, she's done like what, like, like 12, or no, like 8 or 9 versions of Saber, and so they said like, how do you, how do you do it, and she goes, well, you know, Saber was the original since like 2006, and so she's, she always uses Artoria as the base. And then she says, like, in the case of Lancer Artoria, she goes, I start with Artoria, but then I would imagine her, if she was a, a high and mighty goddess, then how would she sound? Or for swimsuit is, you know, when you're on the beach, it's always about having fun and being free. So I take the base of Artoria, but then how would she sound if she was on the beach having fun? And I thought that that was an interesting way of looking at doing it. And it's, you know, I don't really care about Lance or Artoria, but still. It was an interesting <laughs> insight on the whole thing. Um, so, yeah, so the panel was pretty good. The, the panel was pretty solid. Um, I was watching um, Shotgun Shogun. He put out a video on Sunday morning... Uh, after the, the panel and after everything was said and done and he said that he actually spoke with the Anaplex guys and he offered kind of a I don't know well he offered an apology I'm not going to take away his words and he said that if he ever came off as grumpy or mean it wasn't that he ever meant to, to be hurtful or disrespectful he just was frustrated and always just wanted the game that he enjoys to succeed so if he came off kind of as a dick that wasn't his intention but Rather, he just wanted them to, to grow and do better. So, I thought that was kind of cool. And I know that people were, were giving him crap and all that because they were always like, oh, he's so, you know, well, the, a lot of the community is always like giving him so much crap and all of that. And again, it's not the entire community and it's not even the majority of the community, but the most vocal ones are the ones that are everywhere. You know, they don't represent the majority, but they're so loud in their opinion you would think they are but he still said that you know you guys improved a lot from last year to this year and i'll respect that and you know keep doing what you're doing and i think we'll be cool um so you know that was cool that was that was good on him um and you know i toho is someone or well shotgun is someone that i follow for sure and i do watch some of toho's videos but i definitely keep up on shotgun shogun so if you need the fgo info i definitely recommend him as well um, so before we get into the Babylonia anime, which they also showed off there, I just want to touch on again, the waiver anime yeah. that w Roman and I are both going to be on. Um, they showed the first episode already. That's already out on Crunchyroll and who yes. knows where else, but watch Fate Zero. 
And if you need yeah. to rewatch Fate Zero because you can't remember Fate Zero, I recommend that because they immediately like leapfrog right off the end of Fate Zero. Yes. So even if you haven't seen anything, you haven't seen Heaven's Feel, Unlimited Blade Works, that's fine. Watch Fate Zero. Fate Zero is where this basically leaps off of. So it's pretty good. I was impressed with the first episode, but uh, like I said, Roman and I will both be diving into this yes the next episode and there'll be a couple more episodes under the belt too um so i'll i'll leave it at that but at the panel they brought out the one of the studio heads from cloverworks who is the animation studio doing the babylonia anime and he showed off the the sketches basically for ushiwakamaru benkei and leonidas and that was pretty much my whole thing since they announced the anime. I was like, where's Ushi Wakamaru? Um, also voiced by Hayami Sawori. So, of course, I'm like, where's Ushi Wakamaru? Uh, Ushi Wakamaru. Ushi Wakamaru. Yeah. Ushi Waka. So, um, <laughs> that was pretty good. They actually looked pretty, pretty legit. Like, the just looking at the sketches, already they, like, look really on point, really legit. So, I'm really super hyped. Um, knowing what Ushiwaka does in this... Are you finished with Babylonia? No. Are you on Babylonia? No. Where are you? I haven't even started Camelot yet. Okay. Uh, but you're, you unlocked Camelot? I have. Okay. Okay. That's next year, so you're not even safe. Because the Camelot OVA is next year. Well, I, I should be done with it by then, so... I do... I, I just want to level up my people a little more, because I'm... This is your chance. You got me. You got me scared. Yeah. About Camelot, so... So, well, some people claim Camelot is harder than Babylonia, so... There are more gimmick fights, I'll admit. Yeah. And in, in Babylonia, I think that um, the best way to summarize it is... It's kind of like, yeah, we really, like, put you through, through the ringer, huh? All right, well, we'll give you some fun fights. So, um, in particular, the fight that you do with Gramps, I think, was really fun. Okay. I think that that might have been one of my favorite fights of all, of the whole game to date, is that fight, so... Yeah, but I'll leave it at that. Um, which is funny too, because yeah, they haven't shown him either. They haven't shown uh, Gramps. So um, yeah, there's still some mystery left. So they're not revealing everything right no, away, which no. is a good thing. They they did say too, and I think they said this too ever since the first uh, trailer, the first announcement that uh, Kawasumi does the voice of Foe. Right. So the little mascot, yeah, Foe. Yeah. That she does the voice. So Saber does the voice of Foe. Okay, Merlin. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, so so yeah. So the Bab the Babylonian anime though is looking really sharp. Um, speaking, of, speaking of which, oh, this is the oh, this is the uh, the America fight yeah. boss fight. So and this is literally like a, just a repeat. Like there's no gimmicks at all in any of this. So yeah, it's this whole thing. The whole memorial challenge is just boss rush mode. Yeah. Oh damn! This guy wrote in the chat that when he did his guaranteed, his guaranteed was Cleopatra. He got another Emia, another nursery rhyme, and then uh, it was a King Gong from Shinjuku. Oh huh. damn! Four golds. All I got was my my one five, my one four crack tests. Oh, that was a bare minimum roll. Well, I did get a four star too. Yeah, I don't even I don't even know the name of the person so. I don't yeah, know no, you, said you it got, earlier, but you got pretty good. You got you got Mama Raiko, Wu Zetan, and a four star craft essence. So you came out on top. So not like that guy though. <laughs> no, not like that guy. But yeah, I have three sh assassins of Shinjuku. Damn. Anywho, yeah. Um, Question. But that guy's Moriarty, isn't he? The the, the uh, oh, that the old man from Shinjuku. Yes. Yeah. Archer Shinjuku, yeah. yeah. Moriarty. He's Moriarty? Okay. Yeah, yeah. They just haven't revealed his name yet? Pretty much. So it's kind of like the gimmick that they did in like the original series, in like Fate Stay Night. I remember, you know, I keep my name hidden so that you don't know my weakness. Yeah. That's what they kind of do in Epic of Remnant. So, you and you basically reveal the names by just getting to a certain part in the story. So you just need to keep progressing in the story, and then eventually you'll unlock the true name. But it does tie in a little bit into gameplay, because depending on where you're at in the story will change the dialogues when you well when you summon them so like when i when agartha went up i immediately went and rolled uh shahrazad 
So when she came out, though, she's like, I'm the caster of Nightless City. But after you reveal the true name, you can go into the My Room and you can actually see the summoning sequence again. And then she'll actually come out and say Caster Shahrazad, or use her real name. So, and then some of the dialogues change too, depending on where you're at, whether you know the true name or not. So, okay. Yeah. So, okay, continue. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much done, honestly. Um, I got my eye on the Babylonia anime, obviously. We're both going to be watching that in October, so it's nonstop fate for the rest of the year. Yeah. You know, right now, waiver's going on, and then it's going to segue right into Babylonia, and then we're just going to... And Babylonia is going to be at least 24 episodes, so that's going to go through the new year. Well, most of the fate shows are, mm -hmm. so it makes sense. Yeah. It's going to so, be fun. And Babylonia is a long one. Oh, is it? I should expect a long chapter then. I, I want to say that there's almost as many fights as non-fights in Babylonia. Like, there's just little arrows, the arrows on, on that indicate your progress, that are just pure story. And huh. sometimes they'll even be, like, multiple, like, back-to-back. -back. Like, there'll be two or three, like, stories to, in between fights. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so. But it, it should be fun. I think you'll have fun. I think Babylonia was pretty fun. Um, and there's a reason why Babylonia was the most, like, number one. Like, everyone rated that the number one story, you know? Everyone loved it and all that. For me, and I think someone else said it too, but they said that Shinjuku was their favorite. And I, I, I agree. Shinjuku and CCC were, to date, my two favorite storylines. And yes, I'm biased because I love Fate Extra and Nero. But um, <laughs> the, the CCC story was actually, for an original storyline, was actually really good. So... I know that I don't think you were able to participate because you didn't beat yeah, Babylonia, I but, beat it again, so. but it, it'll be back, not next year, but the following year. So okay. if you're still around by then, you'll get your chance, well, and it'll be pretty. I don't fun. plan on dying or anything, so. Well, yeah. <laughs> you might <laughs> well, be you like, know. You, you know, well, you might be uh, done with FGO. You might be like, nah, I'm done with that FGO shit. I'm pure Bang Dream now, or Bang Dream Two. <laughs> so. Bang Dream Electric Boogaloo. Exactly. <laughs> I would have put it past them. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that's... I think that about does it for me. That does it for my fate news until the next time. Alright. So, um, yeah. Yeah, if we uh, hear anything else about Summer 2 in between this episode and the next episode of the podcast, I might touch down on it or I might give some, some pointers and all that. But uh, What kind of servants are available during that? Hmm? Oh, the servants? Well, the five stars are going to be uh, Nero Caster and Maid Altar. Um, but, I mean, Helena Archer, Nobunaga Berserker, Frankenstein, Saber, Ryko Lancer. The Welfare is Ishtar. Welfare. Yeah, so you get a free Ishtar. Ishtar oh. Rider. Nice. So she has her like little moped. That's why she's a Raya. Nice. Um, that might be it. I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's all of them. I think I yeah. Oh, Nido Chris Assassin. That's the one where she actually wears the med jet. Okay. Yeah, Assassin Nido Chris. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and they're split between two banners. Yeah. So I think that banner one is going to be Nero, Nido. Helena, and Nobunaga. And then Banner 2 is going to be uh, Maid Alter, Ryko Lancer, and Frankenstein. Maid Alter is Saber, right? Yeah. Okay. Maid Alter is a uh, Saber Alter. So that's the one that um, she went to the, the beach in uh, Santa Cruz and they called the, or they got paranoid because she had a gun on her. Did you see that? No. So Maid Alter, she does a photo shoot on the beach and actually has the rifle and they put her on the news. Saying that, oh my gosh, she's got a gun. Should we be worried? And it was all like, yeah, this cosplayer was doing a photo shoot on the beach. They had a gun. And although it was fake, it looked real. Okay. Right? I'm like... People are probably at home like, why is this on the news? And then everyone here in the Bay Area, they were like, oh, I know that cosplayer. And it's like, you guys. Yeah. You're not helping. Yeah, right. <laughs> For reals. But, um... <laughs> It, Maid Alter is like up there with like Achilles in terms of like strongest not only writer but also like one of the strongest characters period oh really yeah 
she's quick, and especially when Scotty comes out for uh, anniversary year three, and she's able to buff that. You're, 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 yeah. That's why, even though I'm not, like I said, you know me, I'm not a huge Artoria fan. I actually did buy into Maid Alter. That, and I, I told the guy that got me into FGO to begin with, I said that, isn't this a reference to Carnival Phantasm? When she became Bitch Alter? Remember when and she actually had the Maid outfit, she ripped off the Aoge, and she had the broom and the bucket? And I was like, isn't this a reference to that? And he's just like, uh. And I'm like, <sighs> but, um,. <clears throat> I think it's a summary of like all of the the May or the Saber Alter kind of issues because it's like she's made Alter like Carnival Phantasm, but she's on the motorcycle from Shinjuku and yeah, and she uses a, a, a sniper rifle. So nice. <clears throat> yeah. No, but she eats a popsicle. That's better. Awful. <laughs> um, so yeah, so year, year two is going to be fun. I do like that the uh, Nendoroid for her comes with a hamburger. <clears throat> she, she has a hamburger with her. Amazing. Like it's in her hand. Awful. <laughs> Awful. That, that made me instantly pre-order it. <laughs> I'm a hamburger person, okay. No, I have, I have a friend, she, she cosplays the, the Shinjuku Saber Alter. And we went, after Heaven's Feel, we went to In-N-Out, and then she said, she's like, oh yes, Salter got her burger, and I'm like, god damn. <laughs> and then same thing, too, she came over to the barbecue as well, and it was like, Salter got her burger, and I was like, oh my god. The worst. Uh, I told you, Shinjuku's great. Shinjuku is a great story. Um, I, I think that... I, I, it didn't, like, get, like, I think it was, like, Ninth Place or something, too, so... Quite honestly, my conspiracy theory is I wouldn't be surprised if you if it gets animated, like if it also gets its own anime, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I think it's popular enough that it'll get its own anime. So that had we'll, we'll, um Gene and Oh uh, yeah, Artoria. Arturia. Yeah, so that Jolter and Salter. That's where the, the rivalry began. Because previously they never interacted. Right. But they just thought it would be funny to just put them together. And for the live stream they did before Agartha came out, the the translator was actually talking about it, and he said that he had to come up with a way to make Jolter sound tough, because that was her whole thing. She was kind of like a, a street punk kind of a thing. And so that also is why she wears that fur jacket, basically, because she's like a, a street punk, kind right. of, you know. Not quite full-on Yakuza, but, you know, she's still a farm girl at heart, so... She's a punk trying to act tough, but really she's the you know kind of soft on the inside. So. Yeah, soft yeah. and mushy. Yeah. So soon today. <laughs> but yeah, he, so they said that they just had fun with Salter, and uh, yeah, you get her Shinjuku costume as well. I don't know when. I don't know what event it's gonna ha it's gonna come in. I don't even know if it's this year. It might be next year. Yeah. So yeah, because it's like we get Mashu's swimsuit on the summer event, but then we get Nero's gym outfit, like the bloomers, we get that during Nero Fest. So, yeah. But yeah, her outfit's coming soon, so. Cool. And Estalfo's outfit, too. Okay. <laughs> and Arthur's white tuxedo. I think that's going to be for White Day. So. All right. So yeah, there's gonna there's there's gonna be a bunch of stuff coming out, but nice. Yeah, that's that's all I got. A lot of stuff to look forward to. Yeah, yeah, that's all I got. Cool. Okay. <laughs> uh, covered a lot. We did about two hours and twenty minutes worth of stuff. Well, I hope you guys all enjoyed it. I hope this was all helpful, informative. Um, yeah. I mean, in regards to the fate stuff, um, if anybody is rolling anything, let me know. If you're looking forward to summer, let me know. Did you get Sherlock? Let me know. I'm still working on getting Sherlock. Are you going to go for him? I'm going for him. All right. <clears throat> what did you get it for your guaranteed? Let me know. Yeah, let us know what they got. So, yeah. Um, other than that, I'm good. We got some work to do, some new animated work to watch and games to play, and we'll see you on the next one. So Yeah, be a couple of weeks, most yeah. likely. Yeah, uh, well, we'll be back. We will be back for episode 12. All right. So until then, bye. All right. See you guys later. Have a good night.